Middle Tennessee and Western Kentucky. 58 times since 1914 these teams have met. From 1952 to 1991, Middle held a 24 to 15 advantage. Now last year, Western reigned on Middle Tennessee and Murfreesboro 20 to 17. That cut the Raiders' overall advantage to 29, 28 and one. This year, it may be time to get even. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Houghton Industries L.T. Smith Stadium on the campus of Western Kentucky University, where today the Hilltoppers will host the Raiders of Middle Tennessee. Hi, I'm Joe Williams, along with Coach Pat And hey, Coach, this is an old-time rivalry that maybe one recognizes more than the other, but as Western gets deeper into the Sun Belt Conference, they're a full member next year. It opens up a bunch of doors for the rivalry to continue. Well, the two-year adjustment period will end this season for, for Western Kentucky, and it's time for them to become a full-time member. Of all the teams that they've played from the Sun Belt Conference, they only have one win. That win against Middle Tennessee last year. Very important game for both these teams because they both recruit the exact same areas. I know the victor isn't as important as the sustained program that both of these teams want to achieve. A couple of folks will be watching very closely today that will make a difference, and that is let's start on the Middle Tennessee side with their quarterback, Joe Craddock. Joe Craddock's done a wonderful job for Coach Stockstill. He says he, ju he just is a perfect fit for this offense because he makes very few mistakes. He protects the football. He's thrown the ball 279 times, only five interceptions. Great job by Joe Craddock, the senior from Birmingham. Now, the other side of the field, let's take a look at David Wolke, a young man that Coach grew up in Middle Tennessee's backyard, but he's playing at Western. And he started at Notre Dame and transferred in here to Western. He's done an outstanding job. Not the perfect fit for this spread offense, but really an outstanding football player that has just persevered and found a way to take the lead role. The senior playing in his last game here at home, Expect big things from David Wolke. It's a little bit chilly, it's a little bit wet, but it is great football weather. Come on back, the kickoff is next. Yeah. We are back at Houchin Industries LT Smith Stadium. What a scoreboard, Pat. As we get ready for the big ball game, big red on the water tower. You know, this place really started to rock about 11 o'clock or so. We got here early, and you were kind of gigging everybody. It's game day. <laughs> it is game day. you got to be excited. This is the atmosphere you want. Great college football game, two good programs on their way up. The Sun Belt Conference, and, and I was just talking to a couple, couple people in the media up here, and one of the things they said is they really believe the Sun Belt Conference has taken the next step. And, uh, you know, to the point where Conference USA is starting to get more and more pub. They're catching up to the Big East. And now the Sun Belt has, in their opinion, and I tend to agree, has agree. caught up to Conference USA. I think you're exactly right. The captains are out at midfield. It's senior day, of course, here at Western. The Hilltoppers, uh, one more game after this one, I believe, on the road. They go down, actually, they go to Florida International. And then uh, f for MTSU, they still they still have the opportunity to become bowl eligible. The visiting head coach, Rick Stockstill, in his third season down in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. 15, 19, he's telling him, I think, I think he's telling him, we get the ball. Yep. And, and one of the things, going back to, to their record, I mean, right now, yeah, they're three and six. But right around the corner, they have this game. They they have North Texas back at, in Murfreesboro, and then Middle Tennessee travels to Louisiana Lafayette with the opportunity to become Be bowl eligible. eligible. There on the other side of the field, the home coach, Dave Elson. Uh, you might think he's suffering through his worst season since he became a head coach here, his toughest season, because it doesn't look like, obviously, they're going to wind up with a winning record. Now, they won the one AA national title in 2002, but I got news for you. I think they see this as a building year. Well, and, and it really is. They, they figured these last two years of, quote, unquote, the adjustment phase into the Sun Belt Conference, uh, you know, and they've taken on all comers. They, you know, black, down to Blacksburg, taking on Virginia Tech, and, and uh, you know, you just flip through their schedule. They had Kentucky, and then they had Ball State, 
who I think is one of the, you know, obviously they're ranked in the top 15 teams in the country. There's a good shot of Coach Elson. Right, and look at how young he still looks. That's pretty impressive right there. Hey, for, you could be confused with a graduate assistant. Uh, actually, better, he was you? a few years back. Last time I did a game of uh, Coach Elson, and uh, he got me good with telling me, hey, uh, I said, you know what Coach Elson is? And he says, uh, well, who's looking for him? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a GA. He got me with a good one. You see the weather. The weather's going to play into it. But here's the series history, and it's critical. This game here, if Western has a chance to beat Middle Tennessee, they will end up even on the series. And the, the, the really crazy part about that, Western sees this as a big rivalry game. To win this game today would make the season for the Hilltoppers in many ways. No doubt. And, and you know, we were talking to some of the other Middle Tennessee people, and that's what they said. This is their opportunity to make a season. This is their bowl game in their minds. Setting up, it's time to kick it off. One deep, a little short is the kick, but still picked up at the 11. And Desmond G, who has become the all-time returner in Middle Tennessee. Nice stop on the play for the Hilltoppers, covering well, I believe, was L.J. Hardison. And Middle Tennessee will get the ball first to 10 at their own 25-yard line. As they get ready to roll. Clock is uh, clock is moving, and so is the wind. It, well, yeah, it, that it's it's not that bad. That wind is going to be cold on these guys all day. Into the shotgun. And right now it's in the face of Middle Tennessee as they line up right away in a, in, in a spread formation. And they come out throwing. Over to the right side immediately. Braddock hits Patrick Honeycutt, a 5'9", 173-redshirt freshman who I heard uh, somebody say earlier was probably the toughest kid on his team. How about this? No huddle. Right back in. Right back. Shotgun formation spread out again. Pick up a four. This time they hand it off and go left and get absolutely nothing or lose a couple on the play. What a good football play right there. This time by number 18, Travis Waiters. Comes off the edge for the Hilltoppers. G on the carry. Craddock right there, the senior out of Birmingham, Alabama, playing in his last, well, last time against this Western Kentucky Hilltopper team. Third and six for the 29. Getting last minute instructions from the sideline. I like this little trips formation. And it looks like they're going to go one free. Wide open. Oh, he pulled it down. No, they batted back Did in they his face. they bat it back into his face? <laughs> I was watching the ball go over the middle. Instead, it's a great defensive play by Western. How about a, a big play by Blake Boyd coming back from an injury this year? I think he might have been the guy who batted it down. I think you're right. And Craddock, a little emotional right there, telling his lineman, hey, just get their hands down. That'll bring up fourth down. That'll bring out David DeFana. DeFana averaging over 42, or excuse me, over 40 yards a punt. Stands at his 11. Going into the wind. Heavy pressure, nice kick he got off. Back at the 28. Back to the 33, returns the ball. That will be for Western number 11, uh, Jake Gabler. He'll pick up about five, and that's where the Hilltoppers will take over. First and 10 at their own 33. Interesting to see Middle come out no huddle that early. First shot of David Wolke right here. And, and you know, that's a new wave is that no huddle, look to the sideline type of deal, get the check off. Wolke here comes out with five wides first play. How about this? We, we thought they'd throw, both teams would throw the ball everywhere that they wanted to today, and it looks like it's going to happen. Blitz is I'm gonna come in right up the middle. <laughs> in the ball on the play. ground. It sure is. It's on the ground. No, they're going to say down at the back. Oh, they're saying he was down. No right. fumble. The spot is going to be at the 21. What happened is they stop his forward progress, but the blitz comes from Danny Carmichael, one of my favorite players, as he comes right up the gut, runs a zero blitz, right up the gut, great tackle, and they say he fumbled late. But 
Danny Carmichael, if you like football, take a peek at yeah. Danny Carmichael, the way he plays it. You're going to like this guy, Wolke. Officially stopped at the 21. That'll bring up second and 22. And off to the back coming around. After the 30, flag goes down. Yeah, this is going backwards. This is a yeah. hold right here by left tackle as he worked up to the linebackers. I love, you know, I love the fact that, that the Middle Tennessee defense is so aggressive in how they attack the line of scrimmage right here. But it's a, it, you know, it's a second and long, second and a mile to go. So what you do is you slow it down oh, and you play off a little bit. Look offense. for them to come back and try to get more pressure on Wolke here. All right, that was Booker on the carry. Let's take a look at that offensive line. There you see the starters for Western Kentucky. And Shelly and Hughes, the two guys, the guard and the center, are interchangeable. If anything were to happen to one, they flip-flop. Yeah, they just jump over. The backs of the receivers, there's uh, Booker who just carried. Gave her the wide receiver. We saw him. Uh, and you know already about the quarterback, David Wolke. It's now second and 25, so they really only lose three yards on the penalty. Wolke with a fake, rolls right. Looking long, and that wind may have gotten a hold of that one, Pat. Yeah, it was also pretty outstanding coverage by the safety in the corner right there. Speaking of good coverage on defense for the Raiders, there's that front four. And I like this front four, especially Jenkins, the senior, and Homefacker. Those two guys can penetrate very well. This is the strength of the Middle Tennessee defense is their linebackers, Carmichael, Clemens, and Hickman. All three are playing great. And then the corners, Riley and Isaac, doing a nice job of locking up also. Some of them very young, though. Riley had great coverage on that last play. Wolke quick out to the right and just couldn't hang on to it, Gabler. Yeah, and that might have been that might have been affected by the wind as Wolke tried to put some mustard on that fastball. The problem was the wind is is blowing away from their face, so it's kind of pulling the ball towards the line of scrimmage. They will face a fourth and 25 from their own 18, and it should should send out Jeremy Moore, the they, junior from Indianapolis, to punt. He ought to get a good one here, averaging about 39. And back from Middle Tennessee is Patrick Honeycutt. Decent pressure, decent kick. Honeycutt calls for the fair catch at the 46. And the Raiders will get a second chance when we come back. Early in the first, still no score. We kind of wondered, MTS, uh, Middle Tennessee, their first series, no yards. Western lost 15. <laughs> It's going to be a defensive battle all day. And really two different style defenses, too. Weston, and, you know, they work the 3-4. Middle Tennessee works the 4-3. Looks like a middle is going to try to run. Let's take a look at the starters. Harbison on the tackle. Young offensive line, especially. I like the two guys, the center, Thompson, and the right tackle, Fisher, two, two Nashville kids that really have gone on to great things. The fullback, Longoria, look for big things leading from him. But how about those receivers? King, Caldwell, and, uh, and uh, Bia, all three of them, outstanding players. They've got several they can move around. May get to see one here. Again, that ball is batted in the air. Craddock tried to get rid of it and got just mauled. Here's the defensive line. A couple of them got in there. Klein, Anderson. And Dark actually is out, and Clendenin started for him. Blake Boyd, what a big boost to this Western Kentucky defense. And, and Harbison, a great inside linebacker. In the secondary, those two safeties, Beard and Santoro, freshmen, have been unbelievable this season for Coach Elson. They have definitely held their own. It actually looks like the Sun's trying to break through, too. On that play, they try to get Tanner out of the backfield. But again, late pressure from the Western Kentucky front four, or front three in this case. Third and 11. Craddock over the middle, complete. Nice catch. Hit that one just about perfect as he throws it out there to number four. Bia. Bia. And Bia, I'll tell you, he, is, he has come very far. You watch the, he's just running a, a dig route right across the middle of the field. Craddock waits for him to clear the safety and the linebackers right in between and just too late for Beard to make a play on it. 
Biak gets him all the way down to the Western 22 yard line. Again, a little run play. Almost held up, not quite. G on the carry. G does a nice job of kind of feeling the cut. As he runs with it, he slides his way through and then feels the cut wherever he can make the break and he gets a nice block from his right tackle, Mark Fisher. Got seven out of that one. Obviously better than their first drive. And again. How about the same play? They just run the exact same play. This time he gets the block from McElroy. Just pounds it over the right side. Watch right here, they just work it the same exact way. It's just a zone play, an outside zone as, as Middle Tennessee is starting to feel a little bit of rhythm in their offense. They get a couple good passing plays, they mix in some runs, and lo and behold, they're inside the 10. First and goal from the Western Kentucky nine yard line. And again, this is that offense I was telling you about. They, they make a call, then they come to the line, then they make, everybody looks over to the sideline, get a change. Staying in the gun, there's a quick pass out left side. That's a B.I., that's a touchdown. That's a that B.I. touchdown. That's right. <laughs> and Malcolm B.I., the, the wide receiver, the freshman out of Chambly, Georgia, just does a nice job. He gets the big dig route earlier, and this time just a simple bubble screen as he floats behind. Gets a key block right here, and I'm, I was trying to get a glimpse of who it was. It was actually number 83, Eldred King, who has also emerged as an outstanding receiver in this offense. King, the junior college transfer from Thomaston, Georgia. The extra point kick from Alan Gendro leaves him perfect for the year, 19 of 19. And middle with an early 7-0 lead. Middle Tennessee takes an early lead, 7 to nothing, on a 54-yard drive that lasted less than two minutes, Pat Spruto. And really a, an outstanding drive. If you look at the way it was, it was doctored up, a nice little dig route, Craddock to be a couple big runs by, by, by G. And next thing you know, they're inside the 10, the bubble screen back to be a, He gets in off a great block by King and Middle Tennessee goes up 7-0. Now the answer has to come from Western as they have to sustain themselves a drive or you never know, Middle Tennessee could pour it on. 10 minutes, two seconds left to go in the first quarter. The wind knocks the football off the tee. What's that tell you? It's windy. Very good. <laughs> and the much maligned offensive line for, for Middle Tennessee, when I say maligned, it's a young group, yeah. sophomore, freshman, sophomore, Really, the one thing that they did very well is they mixed up their blocking where they went from a, a nice job pass blocking to a nice job run blocking. Deep kick taken at about the seven. And uh-oh, there's a big hole in the middle. On the return, that was, Willis. That was 26 for 30. As they say. Actually, it was 28. It was Stephen Willis on the Thank return you. did a nice job, kind of feeling his way through. A lot of times, returners just want to go. They don't wait for the hole to develop. Well, Willis kind of waits and anticipates where the seam's going to be created and then fires through. He gets it out to the 40, excuse me, let's call it the 38, where it'll be first and 10. Much better field position for Western. Wolke back of the shot. Has anybody been under center yet in this ball game? Nope. On the left side, nice but run there. What a great job of sealing the perimeter right there by the right tackle. That's uh, Preston King, the 6'4", 280 pound sophomore from right here at Bowling Green. Right tackle does a nice job of just getting after it. Hayden on the carry. The junior. And look at him, he picks up about nine. They go to the run, they pick up nine. What happened here? This is supposed to be a, an all-pass game. <laughs> I don't know about that. You gotta have run. The, the Western Kentucky actually uses their pass game to set up their running game. Oh, big hole. Coming right, big run, Booker. Morrell Booker out over the 50 and into Blue Raider territory at the 46. And Morrell Booker is a power, little power back, 5'9", 215 pounds, low center of gravity, you know, just really tough to tackle. When you get those thick-legged guys, they're real difficult to tackle. And the results, you got a guy dinged up a little bit right there. That's uh, 
Brandon Perry, number 92. First and 10, back to the shotgun. This time it's Bolke who runs forward, but will not get much out of. And again, going back to this offense, this spread offense, you'd like to have, and Wol not that Wolke's a bad athlete, he's just not an evasive runner, but the one thing Coach Elson said is he will lower his head and try to run over people. That That is, you know, I guess the difference in his running style as compared to most spread quarterbacks. And he took Danny Carmichael on head to head, so he's not fearful. No, and here comes, I think, here comes <laughs> A, a crazy blitz right up the gut again. Every time they go empty and they bring back the back to help. Had a chance. Wolke goes down but completes the pass. And it's going to be close to a Western first down as Grabler, or Gabler, excuse me, gets down to about the 36. They can where they mark it. They come back with the same bubble screen that they just got tested on uh, by by uh, Middle Tennessee, they come back with the exact same bubble screen to Gabler, and this time, another good job of blocking on the perimeter by the receivers for West. Stephen Willis had a great block that sent him just flying through the air. And it was not enough for the first down. It'll be third and inches with eight minutes to go in the first quarter. And for the first time, we see somebody go under center. It's Wolke. <laughs> And I'm not sure they got the first down. I think that was Car if that was Carmichael, and I think it was. Yes, he is. He's getting off the bottom of the pile. You want to talk about how a middle linebacker is supposed to play football? This is how a middle linebacker is supposed to play football: is he anticipates where the hole's going to be, lowers his head, and just runs through the hole as hard and as fast as he can. Watch right here, right there. There's a collision, Bang. and I told you about about Booker's thick legs. Carmichael didn't care. It came flying through there in fourth and inches, and guess what? Western's going for it. Bring in all the big boys, and let's see what happens. Big stop, and for a team that's shown nothing but trips and four and fives, they're full at the line. This time turning pitch Booker. He's got the first down. Carmichael in on the tackle, but not before Booker could get across the 35 to the 33. They and Weston did a really nice job at the point of attack as they all kind of got off the football, stayed in unison, stayed in step, and let Booker this time kind of feel his hole as opposed to having a des designated hole to run through. Seven minutes now to go. Clock is ticking. We'll keep you updated on the time as it's first and 10 for Weston. And again, they're going to run, and again, that's not a good idea. Oh, boy. How about Trevor Jenkins just said, hey, this is the way we play defense at Middle Tennessee as he penetrates through that B gap, keeps driving upfield, and then gets a feel for Hayden coming on that, that outside zone play. Watch right here. Look at him. Works his way upfield, does a nice job, keeps his hands on the offensive lineman so he knows he can shed him either way. Got away from Greg Ryan and dropped number one, Terrell Hayden for a loss. It'll be second and 14. They are taking their time today. Wolke looking to throw under pressure. Wow. <laughs> and that's Ivan Hickman with, the, with a little bit of a lick right there. He said, hey, big boy, I'm coming. And Stephen Willis, the wide receiver, kind of runs a little drag route out, right underneath the linebackers. And Hickman said, we'll have none of that. Watch right here. The drag route, boom. Yeah. Hickman says, nope. That, that won't happen in my area. That, that's more of a setup for later on to make him hear footsteps, don't you they, think? They were about to run a little bit of a cornerback trap blitz on the top, and, and uh, I'm surprised Wilkie didn't see. Here it comes again, actually. Third and 14. David looking, throws complete, but won't get a whole lot out of it as he hits Gabler. But Jake is stopped at the 37. And right here, you know, you know it's kind of funny. Middle Tennessee has set up a, a trap blitz right here at the bottom. So they actually, Weston has three on two. If Gabler goes back outside, he's got two blockers on two defensive backs. Nobody's there to account for Gabler. So far, Wolke, two of five, seven yards. Not the kind of stop he was hoping for. And Weston, I think, is going to try to pin him down right here on fourth down, pin him down deep with a punt. Or do we get a fake here at the 37? Jeremy Moore takes it. Nope, he's going to pin him. 
Ball bounces. Oh, nice punt. You can't ask for much more than that. Yes, I As do. the ball stops at the four, you want it at the one. I don't wanted you? it to be my golf shot. Oh. <laughs> well, it won't be your golf shot. So Middle Tennessee with a 7 nothing lead gets the ball back, but it's at their own four yard line. In Kentucky. What a neat little city. Pat Perduto. I'm Joe Williams. We've got about uh, 5.15 left to go in the first quarter in what has been a great contest. It should continue to be 7-0. Middle Tennessee on top right now in what ought to be a considered a rivalry game. We'll talk about that some more as we have already as we go through. Right now, pinned against the back and the quick pass. Craddock out on the left side. Picks up a few. And, Pat, if you're a passing offense, this is a horrible place to be. Yeah, right there at West Caldwell, that's a prime example. Actually, they're throwing out of the shadows of their goal post, and Caldwell had to kind of adjust for that ball. as he threw, It was just a bubble screen to Caldwell, but if that ball drifts back a little bit more, it could be considered a lateral, lateral by one of the officials. That's not what you want to see happen. But right now, it's a good test here for, for this Middle Tennessee offense. They had a great drive last time around. This time, they got to go the distance of the field, and they'll get to choose some clock. And right now, that's their key guy, Philip Tanner, an outstanding running back, great potential. As this, this offense continues to grow, you'll see big things out of Tanner. Tanner goes left and picks up enough for a first down for Middle Tennessee, the Blue Raiders down. First and 10 from their own 14. Braddock so far, five of six for 48. Big difference. Don't forget, five of six, and one of them's completed to himself. So he's going to actually go down on the stat sheet with a pass and a, and a reception on that one. Yeah, play. I was going to ask you how, to, how that was scored. That's, That's a good how question. It's okay. All right. Had the ball batted early in the first half, right back into his hand. Out of just a straight eye. Hadn't seen that in a while. Here come the Raiders out over the 20. Tanner with a carry. And he got a really nice block from Jacob Longoria, the fullback. Does a nice job of kind of feeling his way, feeling where the pressure is. The 3-4 defense is very difficult to, to pick up blocking assignments because you don't know what gaps people are going to fall into. I've always been a huge fan of the 3-4 of the defense just because I don't think pe offenses know who's coming where. Marcus Miner, number two, on the tackle for the toppers. And that'll bring up second and three from the 21. Oh, not a bunch there. Boy, I'm going to tell you right now, Blake Boyd, you know, we talked to Coach Elson a little bit about Blake Boyd, the outside linebacker who's been dinged up. Watch him come from the right side of your screen. He's the outside linebacker. That's how you come down the line of scrimmage, just like number six did right there. As he closes down the gap and follows it all the way down, makes a nice play, and it's going to bring up a third and about two for the Blue Raiders. Exactly what it is, third and a long one from the 23. Looking it over, Joe Craddock. Got a little help to block it in the backfield. One setback. And there it is, nice throw. Boy. Should be good for the first down. Let me tell you right now what that tells me. That tells me you have some serious confidence in your quarterback. It, it, it's all Joe Craddock right there as he hits number one. Chris McClover, the wide receiver on a simple hitch route. Third and one, you don't line up with two tight ends and a fullback. What you do, you spread them out and say, hey, get open, buddy. I'm going to stick it on you right now. It's time they do run. Give it to Tanner. He dances left, comes back right, gets out to the 30. He picks up about four. And again, Boyd on another tackle. Blake Boyd, you watch. By the end of this game, this the, the six foot two, 250 pound junior from Madisonville should have double digit tackles. 218 left to go in the first quarter. Middle with a seven nothing lead. And Tanner this time is dropped for a loss. Boy, and this time it's Ben Souders, the other outside linebacker coming off the other side. Watch this as he knifes his way in there. Watch the penetration. Souder plays off the block of Tanner, sticks him to the ground, and then finishes off Craddock. Nice job by Souders. Again, third down, this time eight yards. That's the big difference from the 28. And here comes Heat. Craddock knows, too. 
This Middle Tennessee offense, offensive line, young offensive line, we talked about it, is about to experience pressure in about two seconds because I think Western is going to bring the house. Mm, they do. Snaps a little bit low. They sell out, send everybody going along. Ah, a lot Ooh. of contact, no flag. Fourth wow. down. Well, now you call that excellent coverage. Honeycutt called it interference. Yeah, you know what, Honeycutt, the ball's a little bit underthrown, and it's mostly because of the wind. The wind's blowing right in Joe Craddock's face. Watch right here. Here comes the pressure, like I said. It's all three linebackers. They're in, they're in nickel. All three linebackers come. He lays it out there, but the wind is hanging that ball up, so Honeycutt has to kind of adjust back to the ball. Do I call that P.I.? Uh, I'm a defensive guy, so no. <laughs> but if I was an offensive guy, I'd say yes. yes, would you? Minute 26 to go. There's the kick to Fata. A little bit off the side of his foot. Takes a funny bounce. Gets across the 50, the 40, the 34. How about how that ball hung up there? Yeah. That ball looked like it was about to take off, and the wind just pulled it right up in the air. Well, and I'm telling you, you know, we have seen David DeFata both in his high school and college career, and we know what kind of leg he's got. Uh, that was kind of a surprise to see it cut back. Coach Elson, can you imagine? Can you imagine what he's telling them? Well, Elson? what he's telling his guys right now, I would assume, is, hey, we got to sustain a drive. We pinned them down. Our defense did the job. Let's get back down there. This time, get in a little bit closer and finish this off. Minute 13 left to go here in the first quarter. We're working on some technical issues, so we'll try to keep you updated on the clock a little better. 7-0. The weather has been uh, very wet and ugly as Western goes bouncing off the left side. And I really like what Middle's doing defensively. They're doing a great job of putting added pressure on, on gaps. I mean, really nice, impressive, total, impressive deal right now. Inside the first, uh, inside one minute, 51 seconds left to go in the first quarter. But the numbers, it's all about numbers in Middle Tennessee, 78 yards, Western Kentucky, 13 thus far. Of course, Western only, you know, Middle had zero, Western minus 13, or minus 15 on their first drive. So, Wolke looking and he's looking long. And he has got a man open and complete across the 50. Breaks a tackle, now another. Down to the 45, that's Jake Gabler. And Gabler does a nice job. They run, I'm a big believer, when you run patterns like this, they take the top off with the outside guy. He goes vertical, so you know they got the corner out of the pitcher. Gabler is running the out route. Does a nice job of separating from the safety right there, Kevin Brown. Gabler catches it, turns it upfield. This guy's a special player, Gabler. Jake Gabler's done a great, you know, he's, he's had a great career here at, at Western, and, and the 5'11", 185-pound junior out of Illinois is really a go-to guy for this offense. 18, 13, Watt kicks away. Little pitch out the right side, a little bit strange, but it's going to get positive yards as they throw it to Tyrell Hayden. How did he get that? How did Wolke get that ball How out of there? I couldn't figure it out. It looked like he was wrapped up for a second being taken down for a tackle. Next thing I know, Hayden's got the ball running up the sideline. And that'll be the end of the first quarter. 15 minutes are complete. The score, middle, seven. Western Kentucky, nothing. We still got 45 minutes to go. All right, Patrick, we got to figure out how to work in the facilities and the eight. Out. Ooh. Yeah, you know what you need right now? You need a little hot cocoa. Oh. A little bit of a maybe a space heater down yeah, by the Tootsies. Foot heater, yeah. Down by the Tootsies. We start the second quarter, Middle Tennessee, with uh, a 7 0 lead. With the ball, though. New quarterback. Oh, my. Number 13. Dexter Taylor lined up at quarterback. Sophomore. Sophomore. Apparently that, yeah. He's normally a wide out and didn't get a whole lot out of it. Well, Middle Tennessee noticed that Taylor was out there uh -huh. too, but they didn't bite. What a great job. Watch right here. This is great discipline 
by the Middle Tennessee defense, and it's all number 25, Ted Riley, the six foot, 180 pound senior out of Boynton Beach, Florida, is not fooled. He knows what his job is, stay at home. He stayed at home, didn't bite on the fake, knew his role, waited, they ran the reverse back, he ate it up. 14, 26 to go in the half. Back into the game is Wolke at quarterback. Facing a pretty stiff wind right now on third and 12. Here comes the heat. Pressure, throws it, complete, but it won't be near enough. You wonder why I'm laughing, Joe. I'm telling you right now, Danny Carmichael is a, he is a snorting, spitting football player. Watch this guy come. Right, watch the hit. Hey, you, man, hey, get your money's worth. If you get a chance at the quarterback, you got to take all you can. I'm sorry. And it's a nice delivery by Wolke under pressure and a great job by the defense of Middle Tennessee to converge on the ball carrier. Back in to punt for Western, Jeremy Moore from his 50. What a great job by Moore jumping up, getting that, getting that football. Oh! Oh, it got away from him. And another nice punt, too. And it'll go out to the 20, and that's where the Raiders will take over. When we come back, 13, 29, lets to go in the first half. Hey, don't miss Emmy Award-nominated Talking Football Sunday night with nationally renowned experts T. Martin, Bob Neal, Mark Shalabak, and Tony Barnhart. It's the ultimate football show for the ultimate football fan. Here are all the engaging discussions, player interviews, and answers to viewer emails. If you want to stay on the pulse of college football this season, tune in every Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern to CSS, your source for Southeast sports. We are back in Bowling Green, Kentucky, where the Blue Raiders of Middle Tennessee now have the football first to 10 at their own 20, with 13 and a half minutes left to go in the first half, holding on to a 7-0 lead and almost holding on to the football. Malcolm B. again goes one-on-one. -on -one. Great coverage right there. This time it's by Waters. Travis Wa Waters, who's playing that kind of slot back, slot coverage guy, really impressive. And, and, and if you look at what, what he did, he lines up on the slot, covers BI one-on-one, -on -one, and Craddock thought he had him. Now with the wind to his back, should be a little bit easier to throw the football, but Waters was all over BI. So they had to lay off of it just a little bit with that wind, or it would have taken off. Craddock now keeps it. Starts left, looking for the pitch, comes back to the right, gets out over the 25, about the 26, depends on the spot. And that'll bring up third, no. Oh, they mark him back at the 25, it's third and five. Let's see this again. Watch right here, Craddock cuts back. Yeah. He's taking down a nice tackle right there, too. I think that, that might have been L.J. Harbison. I think it was. Just taking his time. Craddock, quick throw, a little slant over the middle is good for the first down. I'm gonna tell you, that is a great read by Craddock as the linebacker vacates on the blitz and it's, it's such a smooth read by Craddock. Watch right here, he's gonna get pressure. You see the linebacker blitzing on the inside? That's number four, McBride. He sees where McBride's coming from and hits the slant right back in his spot. Sancho McDonald on the catch that time. And this little screen out to the right again. Marcus Miner, the senior out of Indianapolis, did a nice job playing off the block and getting involved in this tackle. But again, it's, it's after six yards. Watch this. See Miner right there, plays off the block. Nice job, gets a, gets a good matchup two on one up at the top. Eldred King on that catch. There'll be no forward progress on this play, though. Nice play by L.J. Harbison again. The middle linebacker, the inside linebacker, just feels his way and says, I don't think so, Mr. G. Third and two now after the carry by G, and we go back. As Middle Tennessee is two of four so far in third down conversions. Play clock at eight. Game clock, 11 and a half minutes to go in the first half. Again, oh, oh, could not hang on to the football. 
you want to talk about a good football play, number 19, Mark Santoro made a great football play. He's playing the free safety spot, the inside. Watch right here. It's one-on-one -on -one minor on uh, Bia, but right here, Santoro tips that ball. Actually, it's not Bia. It's uh, McDonald, Sancho McDonald. Toro undercuts the route, tips the ball, and just throws it off. Kilter a little bit, just enough for McDonald not to be able to make the adjustment. Defada officially kicking from the oh. 45. How about a 55-yarder? It's good to have the wind at your back, it, huh? Yeah, I was going to say, it's good to be the punter <laughs> when the wind's at your back. And Defada got all of it. The only problem is the wind did, too. Yeah, exactly. 11-15 left to play in the first half of action, Middle Tennessee with a 7-0 lead. And right now, this is an opportunity for Western, even though the wind's at your face. You know, you have 11-15 on the clock. You've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe right now with middle. I mean, your defense has, has tightened up when they've had to. They've given up some yardage. They, both teams have played a great game. How do I know that? Only one penalty so far, and we're in the middle of the second quarter. Oh, you just had to jinx it, didn't you? We're going to be okay. Wolke. Throws out, oh, throws out, trying to get over in the corner I think to Willis. And, you know, if uh, if the middle defender had been thinking more with his head up instead of tackle, it might have been a different score. Yeah, right here, Wolke try they try the little bubble out here to Willis. Willis just reaches out, and he feels the pressure of number 27, Hickman, coming. And we saw what Hickman could do to receivers. Those guys matched up a little bit earlier, and Hickman got the best of it. Second and 10. Wolke under pressure on his butt and picked off. They knocked yep. him to the ground as he again looked to hit Willis. And, and this one cost him, and it's big because it's deep in Western territory. Actually, they're playing a, a cover two zone, and Isaac funnels the receiver inside, and then because nothing else comes in front of him, he sinks like any good corner does. You keep sinking, he sinks right back into the route and makes a great play on it. Watch right here, Wolke, he's got the feel for it. He thinks he's got, he thinks he's got Willis, on the corner route, but but again, Isaac just keeps sinking like a good corner does in cover two and gets back into the play. 11.05 left in the first half. We have not had a score in almost 15 minutes. That could change here as the Blue Raiders take over first and 10 at the Hilltopper 37. Oh. Not with going up the middle in that kind of defense. And not with the play made right there by uh, yeah, number four, Turian uh, David Darvis McBride from his inside linebacker position just said, "No, nah, that that play is not working. Go back to the go back to the call sheet, coach." Tanner on the carry got uh, got a minus one out of it. second and eleven with ten and a half minutes left to go in the first half of action. Middle. Oh, now it's time for their own troubles as Craddock did not get rid of the football. Instead, he wound up with the backside full. And, and that right there is the freshman, Jared Clendenin, who's getting his first start coming off the right side, makes a great move. And look at this, this young puppy out of, out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. Clendenin, 6'3", 240-pound freshman out of Stone Mountain, just does a nice job, says, hey, coach, I'll reward you if you give me a chance to start. And he has. It's now second and 14 from the 41. Middle has not been able to put anything together after the turnover. Braddock, now he's looking, now he's made something. First down and more to the 15-yard line. You want to talk about a great throw to Eldred King. That's a great throw. As Craddock drops that one right over the linebackers and right in front of the safeties. Watch right here. Craddock, great protection by the young offensive line. Drops it right over the safety and right over, right over the linebackers and right in front of the safety. And Eldred King, who had a great game against Mississippi State a few weeks back, goes and shows that, hey, he's for real. Craddock continues to add to his season-long stats, trying to add to the score for the Blue Raiders. This time it's turning pitch. How about a reverse? Craddock even throws a block, and it doesn't help anything. Stop at the 20. I believe that's King on the carry. That's that's Trent Calhoun's Excuse corner me. on the tackle. 
It was Eldred King on the reverse. And that's always tough. I, I've always found that very tough. When you come off a big catch like that, where you went and got the football, then they come back on the reverse, back the other way to the same guy. A little bit difficult, but right here, Calhoun's not fooled. We've seen two great plays by corners on reverse plays. A lot of times, corners, they start to bite. They want to get involved in the play. They're anxious, and they chase everything. This time, Calhoun stays home earlier in the game. The cornerback for, for Middle Tennessee did the exact same thing. Eight minutes, 41 seconds left to go in the first half as the handoff goes up the middle, and the Raiders will pick up about five. A nice play again by Clendenin, the freshman. He's made a couple big plays here, rewarding coach for giving him a start. Joe Craddock so far today, 9 of 13 for 96 yards. He's played a good game. He hasn't had any, any brutal mistakes, and that's the most important thing. Coach Stock still said is he manages the game for us so well. Very few errors, very few catastrophic errors, which are interceptions and fumbles. And that's why he, he's gone with Craddock pretty much most of the year. So far, one penalty, one turnover is all we've had this game. As we go inside of eight minutes, we approach halftime. Craddock looking, looking, going over on the left, right side, rather. And this is a prime example of, of why Craddock is so good. He gets a nice read. Bia's got the short route. And, and I think, yeah, it is. It's number 81, Wes Caldwell with the deep route. Watch right here. Goes over B. Uh, see right there, he knew exactly who was going to be open. Great read. That's good intelligence by the quarterback getting a feel for it. And he figures, hey, maybe, maybe Caldwell can make a difference and, and, and pick it up with his feet. Not enough. And that will call now for 38, Alan Gendro. A 5'10", 172-pound freshman out of Apopka, Florida. Big difference, I'm sure, in the weather from there to here. We have a timeout here, or is it delay a game? Let's see. Ball rests at the 11. It'll be a 30-yard, looks like a 28 or 30-yard attempt. Let's see. Ball start. Ball start. Uh -oh. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. Ball start against the Raiders. Yeah, and that's actually it's the right call. The side judge made the call. The, the Blue Raiders are trying to figure out how or what the, the alignment was. One guy was on the right side, should have been on the left side. So a lot of times that happens when you get a little dinky dunk injury and they move the guy over, he had to get out of his stance. 28-yard attempt, yep. 28-yard attempt becomes a 33-yard attempt, becomes an interception, and the toppers return it out to the 38-yard line. Could be added wide. Does even Coach Elson like that one? You want to talk For about the dodging the bullet and then adding some some insult to injury. That is it right there for, for the Hilltoppers. Snap comes down on the hip, rolls out, interception. If he took this to the house, it would have been the only thing better for Coach Elson. But they dodge the bullet, not giving up any points, and then they get the turnover and move the field position closer to midfield. It was Honeycutt, a 17, who threw the interception and then made the tackle. And it was Miner who's had a great football game. Marcus Miner, the senior from Indianapolis, the playmaker, makes a play. Wolke rolling right, looking, throws a nice catch <laughs> at the 45, and this could be big. Finally, he stopped. The pass, I believe, was complete to Tanner Stewart. No, I think it's Winquell Graves. Watch Winquell Graves, the 5'9", 185-pound sophomore. Wolke on the rollout. Boy, that's a great catch. Outstretched. Graves comes down with it and then makes some stuff happen and gets him inside the five-yard line. Winquell Graves for the Hilltoppers goes up and gets it. The sophomore from Bardstown, Kentucky says, hey, I'm in, coach. He's 87, not 37. Bad eyes. Age. I hear you. <laughs> First and goal from the five. Wolke with a handoff. Looking to the right side. Just will not go down. Oh, Tyrell Hyde. Hey. And, and I'll tell you who can run the alley now. Big number 27, Ivan Hickman, the linebackers. I'll tell you right now, FTSU's linebackers, they're pretty good now. Uh, all three of those guys run sideline to sideline, deliver the blow. Um, every time you hear them hit, pads are cracking. Oh, yeah. Second and goal from the three with just at six minutes left to go in the first half of action. Middle with a 7-0 lead. Hilltoppers trying to even this thing up. Wolke 
his best drive so far as he kept it and paid a price at the five. Wow, moving in, Emmanuel Perez. Was that Jenkins again in the backfield? Watch Trevor Jenkins penetrate. Watch 97 right here on the right side of your screen. Golly, if Wilkie gave that ball, that was a tackle for a five-yard loss. But instead, he keeps it, and guess what? Hickman says, I'll take the quarterback. Jenkins, I, you know, he played a bunch last year. Actually, he was a starter for most of the year. I liked him. I always thought he was a pretty good football player. 5-15. The amount of time on the clock. This is third and goal from a four. Wolke looking right. Nice cut block and nobody around. They try, they try that same well, play that they ran earlier. And they basically keep the defensive lineman in there. Wolke gets outside the pocket. And again, he's really impressive on the run, Wolke has been. And he tries to go back to the guy that got them down there, one Quall Graves, and uh, just a little bit outside. But a good decision. Don't make something bad worse. And there's a prime example of Wolke not making something bad worse. Ray has picked up as in the kick. 37, Tanner Stewart on a 13-yard attempt, and it is good. On the board now, the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. With five minutes to go in the first half, it's a 7-3 contest. Western Kentucky goes 58 yards, or 59 yards in five plays after the interception. Graves with a 22-yard field goal in a minute 54. It's 7-3, Pat. Big, you know, and the big play again was, was Wolke outside the pocket, finding one quote Graves to get it down inside the five. And uh, you know what? Hey, they came away with something. They dodged the bullet with the field goal by MTSU. And now G's trying to get them some more field position right back for MTSU. But, uh, you know, right now, it's been, a, it's been a great football game. Desmond G, here you go. And you talk about G trying to get them some field position, Pat. This has been a seesaw back and forth game. 20 minutes between the two scores. Right. The rough weather kind of keeps everything at a, at, a, at a slower pace. But the reality is Middle Tennessee had the opportunity to take a 10-0 lead. And uh, just a rough snap. Again, the weather affecting the snap. The ball gets uh, bobbled a little bit. And then Honeycutt tries to, to make something out of nothing. And uh, sure enough, Western oh. Kentucky takes advantage of it. Say hello to number 47, Trent Calhoun, who steps up. What a lick. And Calhoun came up, big time tackle. Watch right here. Completed. King dances. Not anymore. Oof. I'll tell you, Trent Calhoun's been impressive. The, the, the freshman, freshman, 5'10", 190 freshman out of Stanford, Connecticut, is really, he's a physical corner. McDonald gets out to the 36-yard line for the Raiders. It'll be close. No, it is a first down for Middle Tennessee. And I think, I think Middle Tennessee must think that, hey, let's go after the freshman Calhoun, a little bit younger than Calhoun right now. Hey, try to take advantage of him. Absolutely. I, I'm a big believer in matchups. Mine, you don't want Chess Miner on the other side. Craddock back in the shotgun. Right now, middle, four to one almost, passing over rushing. 104 yards in the air, 24 on the ground, which is about what we expected. And here's another shot at it. And again, it's just slapped down. You don't know slap it down? No. Blake Boyd. Thank you. Number Blake six. Boyd, I'm telling you, Coach Elson said to me just before the game, I said, you know, how about injuries? What's going on? He said, the one guy that I am so happy to have back is number six, Blake Boyd. Coach, take a peek at him. You watch that guy play football, and you tell me if he's not that type of guy. And you know what? He's right. Both these teams have that type of guy. Boyd on the side of uh, the Hilltoppers and Carmichael on the side of Middle Tennessee. 345 left to go in the first half of this Sun Belt Conference contest. And here comes the heat. Nope, they bail out. Oh, they fake it, drop back again, and complete. 
Oh boy. Almost. I'll tell you, Miner was on his way to his second interception as he baited. What a great look. Miner gives the look right there, number two, that he's playing man coverage. And then they bail out because everybody thinks, you know, when the three linebackers were up in the gaps, Craddock had to believe it was a man coverage too. So he's trying to hit the corner route by number four. Bia. Bia. But Miner bailed out the whole way and was playing the corner the same way. Third and 10 now ball at their own 37 yard line. The Blue Raiders got to get something here to keep this drive going. And it's again your man on the heavy pressure. But Craddock gets the pass off and gets the first down. Craddock a little slow to get up as Boyd laid the lick on him. But let me tell you right now, Craddock is smart. You go back to what Coach Stocks just said. He said, hey, the guy manages the game very well. He had a bad throw to throw before, but he knows pressure's coming. I know I can feel it coming from this side. So as soon as G gets out there, as soon as G gets out there, I'm going to dump it down to him. Of course, G gets it, picks up the first down, moves the chains. Desmond G with the tackle out of the back, or excuse me, with a catch out of the backfield. McDonald this time on the right side. And, and Real right. quick to uh, Sancho McDonald, another before, freshman. Before that pass, Craddock has, is 13 for 20 for 124 yards. One bad pass, which I've seen. Other than that, manage the game efficiently, efficiently. And don't forget, of those 13 completions, one of them is to himself. Yeah, we still got to talk. We got to talk about that at halftime. <laughs> Ball's at midfield with 3.15 left to go in the first half, and this is a straight handoff to Tanner. I tell you what, this young Mr. Tanner, Philip Tanner, the junior out of Dallas, just does not like to go to the ground. And, and one of the things Coach talked about was his young offensive line. Jamal Lewis, the left guard, 6'3", 295-pound sophomore. Mike Williams, the 270-pound freshman out of Tampa. Those two guys on the left side have done a nice job of just creating gaps for Tanner to find holes. But right here, Boyd says, okay, I'm going to get after these young guys right now. Blake Boyd again with another big play. Tanner again on the first down carry does not, uh, does not do well. As he did break one, but watch your paint. Now everybody shows up. Yeah, Boyd puts the initial pressure, and then Calhoun cleans it up the corner, coming in run support. Really... This, this young offensive line has done a magnificent job. Second and 11 from the 39. Craddock looking to throw. Got all day, and now he says, hey, watch this. I think I'll just take off. And after taking a couple of licks, he gets down inside the 30 to the 27. And you can't question Joe Craddock's desire and his toughness as he, he gives everything he can to get this first down. He feels the pocket. Nobody's around him. Gets a grasp and says, hey, I'm gone. I got to make something happen. Gets the pump fake to try to drift the DB back a little bit. Takes a lick for his football team from L.J. Harbison, the line, inside linebacker from Western, and uh, and gets gets them into a third and very manageable one yard. I was going to say it goes from quite possibly third and 11 to third and one. Two minutes, three seconds left to go in the first half. It's Middle Tennessee 7, Western Kentucky 3. Middle Tennessee at the Western Kentucky 29. Third and one. The Raiders five of nine so far on third down conversions in this ball game. And they got the big boy package in. Yeah, they got everybody coming. Tanner right side. I don't know, Pat. He's close. I mean, makes a nice cut. It, it could have been a, a devastating play for Middle Tennessee, but it's actually a nice play by the defense for Western. And they, yeah, they want to look at this, and you this can't blame them. It's, it's a nice read by Tanner as he tries to get a feel, but a, a even better play by the outside linebacker. I think it was Souders that made the play off the edge. If you're joining us late, we welcome you to Bowling Green, Kentucky. I'm Joe Williams along with Pat Perduto as we bring you the Middle Tennessee Western Kentucky game. Uh, yesterday here in Bowling Green, it was a very sunny and pleasant 65 degrees. Today we woke up to rain 42. It's still dropping. Did not get the first down. And it's is fourth, the call. Fourth yeah. and one at the uh, at the 28 yard line. I wonder. I think they're gonna. Oh, go Stocks. Absolutely. Hey, 
we're going to prove to you that we're getting this. And they'll line up and they'll try to run it right down their throat, I assume. I'm not sure, by the See, way, I'm that's a, not big, snow hey, we're seeing falling in front of us. Hey, later. the one thing, this is a great time to run a play action. I know it sounds crazy, but it really is. Ah, shifting around on the eye now. Fourth and less than one. Turn pitch. Uh-oh, could be trouble. Bounces it outside, gets more. Uh-oh. Touchdown, Phil Tanner. 29 yards on fourth and one, and the Raiders score on a rushing touchdown. Let me tell you what, that, that play right there is one of those, no, 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 no. Yes, great job. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm the offensive coordinator, as soon as Tanner bounces backwards, you get so mad at him because you never go backwards on a, on a fourth and one foot. Are you crazy? So right at about this point in time, I'm like, no, 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 no. Yes. Boy, when he finally got to the corner and got free, he was gone. You know, and really, that's a, that's a great run and a great job by the young offensive line. Again, give them credit. They got a body on a body, and the fullback, the two, actually the two fullbacks in front of them, uh, Jer Jacob Longoria and Della Do Gene, uh, Gene Della Donna, the tight end, they did such a great job of just staying with their man, keeping a body on the body. Watch this. Take another look. He goes outside, the big offensive lineman, Fisher has pass position, gets a good block right there. Hey, you gotta sell out if you're Western. You had no choice but to sell out for that. Oh my, it is 14 to three now. Kind of a surprising turn as Alan Gendro made the extra point. That is 20 out of 20 for him this year, by the way. Right there, Philip Tanner, and, and you know, talking to some of the MTSU people, they really think this guy has a chance to really break out next year. But with three games to go, don't count him out. His numbers will continue to grow. The six foot, 205 pound junior from from Dallas, Texas, was is definitely a guy that has the speed, the vision, all the things that make him a good back. Scoring drive for the Blue Raiders. Goes 11 plays, 74 yards, three and a half minutes. That's the longest drive scoring-wise anybody's had all day. Cap by Tanner's 29-yard run. He now has 56 yards on 11 carries. And with 123 to go, if you're the Hilltoppers, you need something special now. Need a big return here. Right now, Middle Tennessee has, has pretty much dominated this first half. And, and it's shown on the scoreboard. Although Western has played tough, you know, they have nothing to show for their toughness and, and their composure and the things that they've done well. Kick will go through the end zone. Boy, it, it's good to have the wind at your back, isn't it? Oh, yeah. We were talking about the weather. The wind kind of changing. It started out yesterday from the southwest, now out of the northwest. And with it has brought a, a real chill. Folks who showed up today in uh, blankets and blankets and, and their winter coat. And really the wind again in the Hilltopper's face is going to make it difficult to throw those, those intermediate and long routes. That's why so much of their game has been bubble screens and slants. With a minute 23 to go in the first half, David Wolke comes back at quarterback trying to drive the Hilltopper's 80 yards quick. Fakes it and just takes it in and takes off at the 28 finally top stop. He gets a little quarterback draw right there. Wolke does a nice job lowering his shoulders, following his fullback. See the numbers there for Wolke, 5'11", 99 yards and a big interception. And a pick. Brings them back, looks them over again. We're inside a minute here in the first half. 14-3. Here comes pressure. Middle. Heavy pressure. Dumps it out. Oh, what a great defensive play. As he dumped it out over the middle, not fooled, Jeremy Kellum, the free safety. Kellum's a good football player. Another guy, smart, very instinctive. Just a sophomore out of North Lauderdale, Florida. I don't think he's seen many days like this down there. But Kellum gets a nice read. Wolke try getting pressure again. The one thing that, that 
that the Blue Raiders have done is constant pressure. They've brought the linebackers in different packages and, and have made it very difficult. And here they come again. This time a handoff to the first back through. I believe it's going to be Booker. And Booker gets out to the 35. He gets positive yardage. But uh, that will just about signal the end of the first half as they set the clock. And that is going to be it as, as Weston's walking away. I was going to say, I think they may have to snap the ball. Three seconds on the clock, but I think with the first down, they're going to have to snap the ball. No, they just got to reset it, and that is the end of the first half. At the end of 30 minutes, middle with a 14-3 lead over Western Kentucky. All halftime festivities are coming up next. We're going to have some fun, and of course, the second half, still to come, right here. Back on the campus of Hochins Industries, L.T. Smith Stadium here at Western Kentucky. Middle Tennessee State has the lead at halftime, 14 to three. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia Williams, how about, a, do you know what that name? You don't even know who Olivia Williams she is. She won the car. She won the car, Olivia Williams, congratulations. How about, we just found out that she has a choice, the Corvette or oh. $30,000 cash. You know what I'd be saying right that's, now? That's pretty easy. Give me the car. Cash is king. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the car. Maybe I can make more cash. Cash is king. Yeah, Go cash buy a used one, king. sweetheart. Yeah. <laughs> Coach Stockstill, he's got to be feeling good about his squad right now. They really played very well in that first half. Offensively, Joe Craddock has been outstanding. Defensively, really, his, his team done a good job of putting enough pressure on Wolke. And now the Hilltoppers will have the first shot as Middle Tennessee kicks off with the wind at their back. As you can tell from the ball falling down and falling off of the tee. But let's get started to go. 15 minutes go on the clock. And we welcome you back, everybody, for the second half. Joe Williams, Coach Pat Perduto, live in, we in Western Kentucky and Bowling Green. And uh, this one ought to be gone. And it is through the end zone. Those are kind of tough, Pat, from a coverage standpoint, and, and especially on the receiving team when you're pretty sure that sucker's going to go through. You don't really want to, you know, take that lick right off the no, start. No, as, as a former coverage guy, I know. The first yeah. thing I'd say, I'd find the kicker and give him a high five. Thank you very much. That's right. <laughs> and here come the Hilltoppers. And Wilkie's, he's been, you know, he's really played not really a bad game. He's 6 of 12. 98 yards, and, and uh, the one interception to Isaac was, was a bad throw, to be honest with you. But other than that, you know, he's played well. Handoff headed left to 20. This is Booker. Booker across the 20 to the 25. This is not what we expect to continue. This is not two teams you would expect to see no. grind things out on the ground. And Lonnie Clemens with a tackle from his, his outside linebacker position, the 6'1", 230-pound senior from Millenville, Georgia. Millenville, Georgia. Is that Milledgeville? Milledgeville. Yeah. Never know who's from Milledgeville. Yeah, shady people. No, uh, normally. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the gun, Wolke. Again, looks at the bubble and tucks it. Just We saw him do that a couple of times in the first half. And it's enough for the first down for the toppers. And, and you know what? That's uh, that's what Wonky's got to do right now. If you're the quarterback for the Hilltoppers, the most important thing is move the chains. Move the chains yep. as often as you right now. You don't have to get it all back in one play. But you have to sustain a drive. And really what, what Middle Tennessee's done is provided pressure. And I expect to see a blitz right here again. They have come hard often. Here comes Danny Carmichael. Got caught. They get the pass out to the 30, 35, and more. And this is what happened. Uh, this, this happened earlier, okay? The two-on-one the two deal that they ended up with 
earlier in the game and didn't take advantage of it. They get it again. They go trips to the left, all right? And because the linebacker is blitzing from the outside, a defensive lineman, watch. You're going to see number 56 out there trying to help on the tackle. He's coming from a defensive end position. You see him right there in your screen? That's hope back in the defensive end because they're blitzing. They're two-on-one out there, blockers. Two blockers to every one DB. And he got the tackle on the catch by Gabler. Again, it's Booker up the middle. Boy, I'll tell you, Cor Michael is a mean dude. He, you know, he is truly the Texas rattlesnake. <laughs> Booker on the carry, Carmichael on the stop. And with 13 and a half minutes to go, it'll bring up third and eight. This group at of the line, top of 48 yard line. This group of linebackers has been extremely active right here for, for the Blue Raiders. They've done a nice job of, of, of really keeping the offense off kilter. Two left, two right. Wolke trying to figure out what he wants to do with one back. That's Booker in the backfield. Tries to get set, finally does. And that, it just took too long. Yeah, delay a game. And right there, what, what he tried to do, he wanted he wanted to switch Booker right, over that, to the other side originally. Delay Booker game. didn't move. Offense. And Five then once penalty. he realized, uh oh, I think Hickman might be coming on the blitz. Let's keep Booker over here. So really, what, what happened was. Wilkie saw that the defensive alignment for Middle Tennessee confused him just enough that forced him into a delay of game. So the credit goes to the coaching staff for Middle Tennessee. That'll bring up second and 13 now. Ball back to the 43-yard line. Kind of the same set. Still two on each side. And Carmichael coming again right up the middle. Wilkie stands tall, gets rid of the ball. And throws it just a bit behind Quinn Terrence Cooper. I'm going to say it again. The linebackers for Middle Tennessee have taken over this football game. They really have. They've just done a nice job of mixing their blitzing game and, and mixing the blitzing that they've had to do along with coverage. Watch right here. This time it's Hickman again on the crosser. Picks up the picks up the receiver. Don't run those unders in front of Hickman. He loves it. They gave him a little push there at the he, end to I'm signify you, that. Hickman didn't he? likes that stuff, and here comes a blitz again. They're in dime this time, though. Third and 13, and nope, they back out of the blitz. Wolke may try to run. Tucks it, he does, won't get a whole lot out of it, and is finally stopped at the 47. Wolke uh, just, uh, I guess, uh, gave the prime example of why guys who really aren't mobile quarterbacks shouldn't try the spin move watch this not good effort at a spin move yeah that's not gonna <laughs> fool anybody i like you david you're a great quarterback but running back you are not anybody else you want to pick on today coach? No, i'm not picking on him because i think he's an outstanding football player the dilemma is that's not in his toolbox know your limitations you know like me i i am i, I am coaches not coach players play uh, that's not in my toolbox as a player Another nice move. kick into the wind, and it just starts to die. And finally, fair catch caught for at the 26. When we come back, Middle Tennessee will have the ball. First and 10 from their own 26-yard line with 11.40 left to go in the third quarter. we got to get back on them because let me tell you right now. that you can see there uh, for the Hilltoppers as they really, Pat, increased uh, their facilities here. This is Philip Tanner for middle. See, now, the right Tanner side could have tried to spin move there. Okay. We're going back to Wolke's spin You're move. You're really move. worn out about this well, spin he, move. Well, here's what it is. I mean, you got to know, like I told you at the break, you got to know your limitations. Around the fringe of the green, I'm going to putt it up close to the pin. Good golfers, they chip it up there. 
I guess that makes me not a good golfer as Tanner gets the first down. Boy, Tanner's had himself a, a pretty good football game. Right now, his numbers in the in the first half were 11 for 58. Now, he adds that total with a nice little nine yard run right here. Good so, yeah. Boyd again, Blake Boyd on another tackle. And like I said earlier in the game, at the end of this game, Blake Boyd is gonna have double digit tackles. McBride also in on that one as we approach the 11 minute mark of the third quarter. And middle with a 14-3 lead. And Craddock, Better figure out what he's doing. He's going to wind up with a with a delay call of his own. Now he comes, gives to Tanner, and boy, they were not fooled that time. This time it's actually it's Desmond G. Desmond G. G. Excuse me, yeah, but that was Marcus Miner who came blitzing in from his corner position. Hey, Marcus Miner, I've been impressed with Marcus Miner. The the cornerback right here from from Western has been very impressive. Six foot, 200 pounder senior out of Indianapolis playing his last home game here uh, for the Hilltoppers really has been impressive. Good athlete, he's long, he plays long too. Second and 11 from the 37. Craddock is letting that clock run with 11 point lead. Oh my, looking for Baya. Bia, excuse me, and I'll tell at the you right 47 now. and just a hair behind him. L.J. Harbison thought he had a pick six coming. Bia runs a slant, and L.J. Harbison in his hook zone. Watch right here. Oh, he's thinking, I got this. I'm going the other way. Ball a little bit thrown behind, but that's the only place he could have thrown it. If he threw that on the money, Harbison was going to be, he had nothing but green in front of him. Five out of ten times in the first half, 50%. The... Blue Raiders picked up a first down on third and. See if they can do it again. Ten minutes on third the clock. Third and 11, though. Yeah, it's a little it's bit yeah. more difficult. <laughs> it's third and 11 this time. And Westerner's in the dime. And Second pump. Oh, third pump she wrote. fake. And that'll get you sacked. And this, down at the 25. And this time it's Trent Calhoun, the freshman corner, again, coming off the edge. Watch him from the top of the screen. He's going to be coming right there. Calhoun finishes it. Nice blitz. I like the packages that, that the Hilltoppers came out with defensively so far in the second half. It's been pretty good keeping, keeping the Blue Raiders off kilter. Gabler back deep. And they're going to come after At this? his own 32. And it looks like they're coming all for David DeFata. They did, and he still got it off. And he is driving. Ga and Gabler says, let me get away from this thing. Look oh. at DeFata. He's done it again. Ball was on the 26. It'll stop at the three. That would be just quick math. A 71-yard punt. That would be a career record. Well, let me tell for you, David right Defada out of Franklin High School De in Franklin, Tennessee. That right there was wind aided, but still, sure. Defada to get it off. You got to realize that Western was coming at him. So to get that type of punt off, usually when you have to get a punt off quick. You very rarely get foot into it, but to get as, that much foot into it and get it off and then hit it that far down the field, that's a nice, that's a great punt by DeFada. I'll guarantee you Coach Howard Gamble sitting back at home oh, yeah. in, in Williamson County just grinning ear to ear, you know? And he now puts, it puts this hilltop offense in even more of a bind. Get it out on the run, but only back to the original or to the line of scrimmage. Boy. You want to talk about emotion. Danny Carmichael plays this game the way you're supposed to play football. I mean, he plays all out. No, no reservations whatsoever. He sacrifices everything he's got. You see number 44 right there. Just tough, you know, emotional. Plays, you know, one of those spitting, snorting, grinding type of guys. What you called him earlier. Oh, I love yeah. that. I mean, I really do. I think that that's what this game is all about. Second and 10 from the three. He's got man-free coverage, so Wilkie's going to have a shot at a decent throw. They go back to the ground. They go back to Booker, and he is stopped again, either at the three or the two. Boy, this time it's, it's, it's his partner. It's Hickman again. Those two guys, I told you, this linebacking core for MTSU is, is a good group. You got Carmichael, this time it's Hickman. Right there, Hickman and number 47, Dwight Smith. The, the right defensive tackle 
those guys, I'm telling you, it's nonstop. And, and now, if you're Western Kentucky, you better get some yards so your punter at least has a chance to get it out without a short snap. Third and 10 from the three. Wolke in his own end zone, rolls left, looks, has to bring it out and gets past the three, the five, the eight. He got the first and down. He may have gotten the first down. How about that? See, now that's more Wolke repertoire. He thought about trying that spin move again and said, hey, I must have heard Coach Spaduto up there in the booth and said, don't do the spin. And watch, gives the old dip de doo See, this is the little dip de doo coming at you right. Duck. Ooh. Right back up. So that's okay. Just don't spin. Yeah, he's not a spin guy. The dip de doo's okay. Well, guess what? He pulled off the first down at the 14 hey, yard line. And that's all he has to do is keep those chains moving. Well, got to put some points on the board, too. Right now, Western Trails 14 to 3. Try to come up the middle and nice forward progress on the run. And a good, really a, a good, tough run right there. I think it's number one, Terrell Hayden. On a carry, for the junior from Lexington. Seven minutes left to go in the third quarter. Middle holding on to that 11 point lead. Second and five now for Western from their own 19. Right now, Western needs a shot in the arm. That run by Wolke might have been that shot in the arm. A little B12 complex push. Yeah, they needed it. I mean, they needed they, it. was looking pretty grim for a moment. Hickman on the blitz goes past the runner, but it doesn't matter. All his buddies show up on the side and pick him up. And it's beginning to get a little chippy down there in a couple of spots. And, and well, one of the things you talk about Hickman going past the, the runner on the blitz, one of the things that's very important as we see them all peeling off the pile, one of the things that's very important when you do blitz McLeod there who had the run, when you blitz, it's as important to penetrate as it is to, to, to actually make the tackle. There you see a, an unbelievable stat. Wolke last week, 178 yards rushing. That's more than half of his total for the year coming in in one game. Wolke out, complete. Nice spot. Yep. Nice spot. Close to uh, a first down, if not a first down. David. Jesse Quinn on it's the tackle. Jesse Quinn, yeah. Yeah, one they're of the gonna things, yeah, Quinn should have probably, I, you know, I think Quinn expected to get hit right here. See him? Oh, He's I think looking. He, I, think yeah, he, I think you're right. I think he might have expected to get a lick right there. Uh-oh, flag on the play, too. See what we got. Right in the middle of the line, you would expect holding. That may not be the case. After the play, personal foul, number 98 on the defense. 15 yards from the end of the run. Personal First foul down. against uh, the Blue Raiders. They're charging that to Andrew Banks, they said. Yeah, maybe not. Yeah, I think he missed that one. That's okay. But it's 15 and a first down. Yeah, I think, I, I don't know who he was calling on that one, but that's okay. We don't like to deal with the negative. I no. mean, oh, Coach Stock's going to talk to somebody, uh, yeah. so I feel, bad. You that's gonna have a discussion. I feel bad for whoever Coach Stock is talking to. First and 10, 5.45 to go in the third quarter. Ball is at the 41-yard line of the Hilltoppers. No misdirection, just a handoff, and Hayden, Hayden again. Nice job by the right side of that offensive line. Greg Ryan and Preston King fired off the football, opened up a little crease, and, and Hayden made the best of it. Watch right here in the center, too. Don't forget Shelly Anthony. Those three guys create a seam, little back cuff at Terrell Hayden. He finds a crease, makes a play. Second and two, got to get into Blue Raider territory for a first down. Five minutes left here in the third quarter. And it's Booker. Booker's got He's into got territory and more. Still on his feet at the 35. What did I say the first half about Booker's running style? He's got those thick thighs. Really make it hard to take him down unless you get him clean. You ain't getting him down. Those thighs keep pumping. Look at that. Look at the size of those thighs. Oh, my gosh. Now, let's watch this again because I think he made a spin move, and it's okay for him to do Absolutely. that, right? Absolutely. Okay. 
Back like that, watch right here. Sticks his foot in the ground, turns Back. it up. Yeah, you see, that's okay. We're gonna let him get by with it. We'll keep that one in his toolbox. First and 10 at the middle 30 with four and a half minutes to play. In the third quarter, Wolke back, he's looking, he wants something, hey. and he got to, out of bounds with it. I think somebody needs, right now, needs to tell the Hilltoppers coaches, do not throw at Rod Isaac. Rod Isaac is not biting on anything. The, the corner, 5'11", 180 pound sophomore from Miami said, hey, don't throw my way. Booker so far, who got him to this point with that big run, 11 carries, 53 yards on the day. And, and really, he's been, you know, he's carried the ball 4.7 a clip throughout the season. So, you know, he's and put he's up right good on, numbers. Yeah. Little better than average right now. Oh, well, he's in trouble, gone. Sacked Hofacker. at the 45. Hofacker and Jenkins, these two defensive linemen are good football players. Wes Hofacker and Trevor Jenkins, the two big seniors just Conver converging on the quarterback. Watch right here. Jenkins off the off the right side. Hofacker off the left side. Hello. Wolke not real happy with the way everything went down there. Third and 24 now with the ball at the 44 yard line of the Blue Raiders. 3.51 to go in the third quarter. 14-3 contest. In third and, and going into a win that has settled a little, but not a lot. Wolke looks. Wolke is sacked again. Whoa. This time it's a combination of Chris McCoy and Jamari Lattimore. The, the two backup defensive ends, J Jamari Lattimore, the 6'3", 235-pound sophomore, and Chris McCoy, 6'4", 250-pound junior, converged to meet Wolke. And, and you know what? You just got to get rid of it. The pressure is constant, and it's vicious right now for this, for this Blue Raider defense as they, they like sharks in the water. Jeremy Moore should be back to punt. That's Honeycutt back at his 19 to receive. Got it off, pushing Honeycutt back, and he calls for a fair catch at the 13. Two minutes, 55 seconds left to go in the third quarter with the score. Middle 14, Western 3 will be back. Well, hey, folks, don't forget CSS has the gridiron covered when it comes to college football this season. Don't miss all the action with live and encore games of your favorite college teams in the Southeast. Go to css-sports.com today to check out this week's schedule on CSS. Don't miss another live game tonight when UTEP faces Louisiana Lafayette at 7 p.m. Eastern right here on CSS. And speaking of right here, how's that? So For right Tanner, here as Tanner goes right up the middle. Tanner Tanner is looking at, at having a 100-yard game. You know, usually, usually the team that's ahead wants to run the ball. Right now, MTSU, that was the fifth carry of the second half. Whereas Western Kentucky's had 13 carries on the ground. So it's a little bit odd, but a couple of those were quarterback runs. And a couple were sacked. Yeah, true. 2.17 to play in the third quarter. First, or second and one, I, I should think say. We'll I think we'll see more of Joe Craddock under center here. Oh, yeah. pump fake. They're trying to hitch and go. Ain't going to happen. No, minor. Uh -oh. oh, that's two flags that may be a little late. I just wonder which way they'll go. No, I, I, I'm going to bet you that both are minor. If you look at they ran yeah. a hitch and go, and that's the whole purpose of it. It's to see if you can get minor to bite on the hitch. Miner doesn't bite on the hitch, but he knows, uh-oh, this guy's going to have a head of steam getting over the top of me. I better bump him. And I think it was Eldred King out there. They are talking it over, and Craddock is pointing. The Pass interference, number two on the defense. Penalty, the ball will be placed at the spot of the foul, first down. That's the right call. That's exactly the call. I mean, it's the right call, uh, I, you know. You hate to say it, but it's the right call. Minor, minor bites, minor bites on the hitch and, and bumps him. Watch right Watch here. Top. top left corner of your screen. Hitch. He takes off. Minor bumps him. Yep. He's got to I mean, gotta call it. It's either that or let him run by and catch a touchdown. I'm going to take the penalty right now. I'm, if I'm the defensive coordinator, I'm telling Minor good job. Yeah. First and 10 from their own 36. Middle Tennessee with the ball. Blue Raiders holding on to a 14-3 lead as we approach the two-minute mark of the third quarter. 
Can you say Philip Tanner? Uh huh. Craddock, and that's exactly what he does. Just pitches to Tanner. And I thought he had a hole, but it sure closed mm -hmm. up. The uh, big red defense coming in there. Hey, Joe, you, you, do you think I know football players? Yes. Okay. Um, remember, I said this. Number 47, Trent Calhoun, the 5'10", 190-pound freshman from St from Stanford, Kentucky. Right there, number 47, who makes that tackle. Four years from now, somebody in the NFL is going to be calling out his name. Okay. That guy is a football player. He is a very good – he's a physical corner with man skills and tackling skills. That guy, barring major injuries, is going to be – is going to have a chance. Craddock throws for the first down. L.J. Harverson. Just a little seam pass to 17 Honeycutt. Honeycutt makes the makes the catch and Harverson makes the tackle. As that's the first throw that Craddock's had to make this half. First and 10 from their own 48. Drive continues to the minute, minute 12 mark of third quarter. There's a <laughs> there's, He's unhappy, of course, of being tackled. Ben Souders makes a big time play as they blitz the outside linebackers this time. And, and Tanner can't even get his feet. Watch how fast Souders comes off the top of your screen. Right there, underneath, reaches down. Look at Tanner. Tanner cut him down. I thought I was going. I thought I was going. And right now, 50 seconds left in the third quarter. The wind at the back of the Blue Raiders. Now's the time to throw the football, no question, because come fourth quarter, if this wind stiffens up even more, there's no chance you're going to be able to complete a pass. He turns, and there's one that got caught by the wind and carried past the receiver. He was looking for Bia. And Bia's had himself a nice football game. Malcolm Bia has had several nice games in a row, apparently. And just a freshman. Remember, that this, this team's a young football team, this Blue Raiders squad. They're going to be a good football team in the upcoming years. 33 seconds left. He won. Uh, he caught the game-winning pass. Against Florida Atlantic. Against Florida Atlantic. Came with no time on the clock. Don't you know that felt great? And on third and ten. Got to make something happen he's here. Running. Now he threw, and he did. Honeycutt with a catch of the 30. Boy, I think he's over the line of scrimmage. No flag on the play, but I tell you what, if you get a shot at Coach Els Elson, he thinks he was. Oh, I think so, too. Let's see. We may have something here. Yeah. Ah, 47 is the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I think he was. Well, that's close. It looked like he released it to 48 and a half. It's going to make a difference because they're running the next play. Yeah. Nope, it is going to make a difference. We got a challenge coming. Going to review. And that's the right call. You got You got to take a good look at this. You know, Coach Elson has to has to feel pretty good about it because he was actually standing right there where it kind of took place. So he was looking at it. You know, it, it's in front of him. So the issue right now that is being reviewed is apparently whether or not Joe Cranick was past the line of scrimmage when he released the ball on the last completion to give the Raiders a first down. 19 seconds remain in the third quarter. It's a 14-3 lead in favor of Middle Tennessee as we are on the campus of Western Kentucky University and, and, in beautiful and, Bowling yeah, Green. Let's talk a little bit about, about the renovations here. We got a chance to tour the, oh. the facilities. They, they really have done a great job stepping up. Um, you know, you look at their adjustment. We talked about that earlier, the two-year adjustment the last couple of years on their way to becoming Sunbelt members. Really, the program is on its way up. And as is, don't forget, Middle Tennessee's program is the, has kind of taken the same path over the last few years on their way up. Um, another thing that Coach Stockstill uh, from Middle Tennessee is excited about is the fact that they are back to full compliance, 85 scholarships next year. He's excited about their where they've gone with their program and their grades and things like that for their players and their graduation rate on the other side, Western Kentucky. So these programs, a little over an hour apart from each other, we keep saying, hey, like it or not, it's going to be a rivalry. When they walk into the, to a, a home out in Memphis oh, of yeah. a young man that is that type of player that can fit into a Division One program, you know, like it or not, Coach Elson's going to be walking in there one day and Coach Stock is going to be walking in there one day and they're going to be talking about the same thing. 
be part of our program, be part of our history, making history for our program and creating a one of those teams, one of those magical trips that, that sometimes teams get to take, like Ball State does right up the road. So, and that's, you know, you look at the, the way this, the Sun Belt has grown and the players that have come out of the Sun Belt, it, it's now a great option. I was going to say, the Sun Belt Conference just kind of uh, exploded in the last couple of years. It really did. And has, has grown into, uh, I hate to use the term mid major conference. Now it, it's actually moving a little further than that. Right, well, you look at where, where these conferences have gone now. Ball State, I'll put, you know, I talked to Coach Elson about Nate Davis, the quarterback at Ball State. Yeah. I'll put that guy up against After any quarterback review, in the country. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Ooh. There you go. Uh, you know, do I think he was behind the line of scrimmage? Sure. <laughs> is it oh, worth? Man, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, though, is it worth reviewing? Absolutely. Yeah. That is a critical football play right there. You have to at least look at it on tape. And he's right. And coach is saying the same thing. Hey, if you looked at it, I believe you. Let's move on. But that—that's the whole purpose of instant replay, is to have the ability to check and see, you know. What happened? What happened? Here's a replay for you. We're going to replay the end of the third quarter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> two minutes. No. How about two seconds? That's it. The end of the third. We go to the fourth with Middle Tennessee still out in front, 14 to 3. All right, don't forget to hear the latest Blue Raider team news on the Rick Stockstill Show. That's every Wednesday at 4.30 Eastern, 3.30 Central. Get an inside look at Middle Tennessee football that you can't get anywhere else, only right here on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. We start the fourth quarter at Western Kentucky. Houchin Industries, L.T. Smith Stadium. I'm Joe Williams along with Coach Pat Sperduto. Middle Tennessee with the ball and an 11 point lead partner. And, and now the wind in their face, so look for a lot of Philip Tanner the rest of the way. How about starting right now? Tanner going left, makes a spin, and he just pays for it. Oh my gosh. Whew. Now, if you're right now, if you're Coach Elson, you gotta be telling your guys, hey, that's what I'm expecting from you guys the rest of the way, and it's nonstop. Watch this. They run the toss sweep. Good push up field by One, big number two, 92, three, four, Belcher. Three, four, three, and then five, here come the troops. Six. Got about seven involved before they were all done. Right, and it was led by Souders and Harbison who uh, kind of initiated all the contact back there. Second and 13. Ball rests to 33. Waiting on the snap from Mark Thompson, the junior from Donaldson Christian Academy. They, they got man to man here at the bottom between Minor and, and King. And he saw it, turns, goes left, knocked down, and... Uh, Guess who? Yeah. Trent Calhoun again. I'm going to tell you right now, that kid's a football player. Don't get it wrong. You do not have cover skills like that, and then turn around and have the tackling ability, the awareness. This kid's a good football player. And just a, a true freshman. Not a red shirt, but a real freshman. Look at the drive. That's... Plant and drive, he knows, get your hand in there, just make sure he doesn't get it. Third and 13, got to get to the 20-yard line. Joe Craddock, senior quarterback. Here comes, nope, I thought we were going to get the blitz there. Got one late, looking long. He's got to catch it, got to control it. He got it. Touchdown. That's Sh Sancho McDonald, the 6'3", 197-pound freshman from Miami. The former quarterback has turned out to be a magnificent receiver. We had Coach Stock on the phone earlier in the week, and we talked about Sancho, and he yeah. said, hey, world of ability, he's just learning how to play how to play receiver. Here's he's another. been a quarterback. Look at he's running the fade route. Look at the throw by Craddock. End of the win. Bounce. Concentrate, catch. Boy, that's a great football play. And it's really good coverage by Chris Franklin, the senior out of Louisville. But McDonald eats him up with size and speed. The extra point is good. Middle extends the lead to 21 3. Let's take one more look. 
as there's McDonald after the catch. Watch right here, Chronic. He knows right now he's going with the, the fade route on the other side. He takes a peek, draws enough of the safety over so the safety doesn't get over the top and get involved in the play. And then McDonald tips the ball actually up to himself and then finishes it off. 33 yards, Sancho McDonald. 70 or 87 yards on the drive. Nine plays, 356. Puts the Raiders ahead. 21-3 with just under 14 minutes to play. It's the turn of the Hilltoppers now. McLeod. Over the left side, gets over the 25 to the 26, 27, depends on where they're marking. And right. that's where David Wolke has to take over. Wolke, of course, Smyrna, Tennessee, where he played his high school ball, left there, got recruited to go to Notre Dame, spent two years and went, nah, this may not be for me. Came well, back now, to West. Yeah, and he's close to home an yeah. hour from Nashville, and, and really, a, you know, Wolke's a good quarterback. It's just, yes. you know, hey, tough situation right now. And if, if you're a defensive lineman from middle, you got to be excited because you get to rush the passer. And that looks like what they're going to do again. And they're pointing. They're saying one of the young uh, linemen on the right side jumped, and there is a flag. Let's see what they call. Sure enough. Carmichael standing up in that gap dancing, as he's done several times today. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 68 on the offense. That's the call. Five yards penalty, first down. And, and one of the things, when you look at it, it's really been a mistake-free football game. For the I most mean, there's part. There's been very few penalties in this game. Uh, and, and and for Western, I mean, five total penalties, yeah. not bad. Say two in the first half and two this one. So I, I've, I've missed one. You know, you know what's funny? I always like looking down on a cold day and seeing uh, the sidelines and I look at all the kickers standing together by the space eaters. Oh yeah. It makes me sad. <laughs> Pass out in the flat, incomplete, almost picked off. And Wolke on a little rollout, he tries to he tries to throw the out route. Good coverage again this time by Isaac. Rollout. Oh boy. That could have been ugly there for a second as Ted Riley, the corner, actually playing the slot spot right now, goes for the pick. And will bring up second and 15. Showing blitz again. Throwing, complete, that's Gable. Gabler, and he's got, oh, guess what? From behind comes the flag. It's going to be, it, it's going to be, a, uh, I'm pretty sure, a personal foul face mask. I'm almost positive. Jake Gabler on the catch, junior out of Illinois. One of the, if not the leading receiver, the second leading receiver on this team. And let's see. Personal foul, face mask, 25 by the defense, 15 yards from the end of the run, first down. Coach Rick Stocksville just shakes his head. And adds 15 yards to that, so what was second and 15 now becomes a very long positive. May we see it here? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's Riley. Yeah. Come on, Ted Riley. Can't be grabbing face masks. Senior just got it all up in there, didn't he? Well, he can't do that. All right, first and 10, Hilltoppers from the Middle Tennessee 43. Wolke, it's that design draw, and there he goes. See, no much spin better. move. To dip de do. Yeah. Got left the spin move in the toolbox and brought out the dip de do again. Yeah. I thought that was for your hair. Dip de do for your hair, sure. Oh, look at the kickers. They make me sad standing <laughs> in front of the little <laughs> space still, theater. You are still having a hard yeah, time, aren't you? Yeah, it's not tough. Be a football oh. player. You're cold-blooded, brother. Go stand in the today. puddles. You know, saliva not standing by the space eater. It's because we're well insulated. Second and Here four. Here comes pressure. Wolke turn nice complete job. to Booker first down. That is a nice job by Wolke standing in there. He knows where the pressure's coming from and delivers a strike right on the money. See it again. Watch right here, the pressure's coming, he sees the stunts, everything's right there. He knows the outside linebacker's gone, so I'm gonna stick it right there to Booker, who's running my little check release route. 
First and 10 at the middle 31. 12 and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Wolke rolls left. And keeps it again. Cuts back to his right. Gets inside the 30 to about the 27. And, Pat, at what point do you start getting worried that your quarterback is taking too many hits? None. You okay. never get worried. You just say, hey, we got to score a touchdown quickly, guys, and then we got to get the ball back, and we got to score again. That's the only thing you're thinking about. However you get it, who cares? You know, hey, you got to do what you got to do. And Wolke, I'll tell you, he's, he's a warrior now. We've seen enough of oh. him in his career that we yes. know he's going to fight to the death. And Coach Elson, that's the one thing that stuck out with Coach Elson. He said, hey, this guy's tough, how about and that's right how there. tough he is. How about that, Gabler. if you want to know? To his buddy Gabler, touchdown, Hilltopper. Hey, that's what you do. You ask me how many tits yeah. does he have to take? Not, not enough. Wolke hits Gabler on a nice little run. It, it's kind of a skinny post where it's not a true post route. Where you run right at the, you know, up the field and then then break it to the post. He kind of runs a circle post where it's just really over the top. Extra point is up and good. And that's big right now for Weston to get back into this game. 21-10. 21-10. You're correct. The score with 11:45 left to go in the ball game. Middle should get the ball back when we come back. Oh, there's Big Red. Big Red's having fun taunting some people. Can you oh, imagine? You know what he's doing? He's talking to the one that won the, said, won the Corvette. He, she, he's telling the girl, hey, give me that car. It matches my me. <laughs> well, he gave it away. He pulled her name. So right now looking for a name to be pulled, the Blue Raiders. And that's G out to the 25. Desmond G on the return. Good coverage right there. On the drive, six plays, 73 yards, two minutes, seven seconds for the Hilltoppers. Capped off right here by this pass. Wolke, watch right here. <laughs> That's a poor pump fake, but it's a great throw. Look at this throw. Oh, perfect. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better throw in football. He drops it right over the safety, and Gabler just knows, I got you. 11.38 left in the ball game, and right middle 21-10. And the win's in the favor of, of the Hilltoppers. If they can get a three and out here, hey, you never know. Stranger High formation, things. believe it or not. Turn, pitch. Oh, man, there's nobody out there to help Philip Tanner. Well, that's one of those naked plays where you make it look like you're running one way, Tanner goes the other way, Craddock pitches it back door. And uh, they try to slip him out the back, but again, guess who makes the tackle? Mr. Boyd. See, again, six for six plays, 73 yards. The penalty was huge. Yeah, it was. They it were facing, department. yeah, facing third and 20. They got 20 on a pass and 15 on a personal foul. Face mask. Back to more of what we expected. An almost empty backfield in the gun. Instead, the almost empty is Tanner, and he gets the carry. Boy, nice play by Klein. Dan Klein, he's been a little bit quiet today, but, you know, how, how much does Coach talk about this kid from Centerville, Ohio, the 6'6", 265-pound defensive end, Dan Klein? Been a, a great football player here at, uh, at Western and uh, playing in his last home game. There's not a bigger play than this one if you're if you're a hilltopper. Here it is, third and two from your own 34-yard line if you're a middle fan. The it's hilltoppers need the stop here. Right now, three, look at the bottom, Joe. Bottom of your screen, you got three on two down here. Mm-hmm. And do they see it? They did. You betcha. Oh yeah. Three on two, guess what? Th those numbers don't equate if you if you're a defender. You're like, hey, they got too many receivers out here. Honeycutt on the catch from Craddock. Watch right here. It's three on two at the bottom, and Craddock just says, okay, who are they not going to cover? Okay, I'll stick it on Honeycutt. Yeah. That, was, that was like you get when you're a kid playing in the street. Two passes at first down. Just take two steps, turn around. Yeah. I'll hit you, and we're ready to go. Hey, Honeycutt, just uh, one of those tough, hard-nosed kids. You know, he's not the fastest. 
He's not the biggest. I mean, Coach Stock still said he's got, if there's a guy with more heart that plays for, for oh. any college in the country, I want to meet him because Honeycutt is the toughest kid on this football team. Tanner again on the carry and again start counting them as they come off the top of it. Yeah, and one of the things you got to give kudos again to this offensive line. We talked about how young they are. This this offensive group up front right here, Tanner on the on the toss. But the offensive group up front, yeah, this isn't one of their better plays on the day. But Mark Fisher, the right tackle, McElroy, Mark Thompson, Lewis. And Williams, those five guys, the young guys, have played outstanding. Nine minutes left to go in the contest. Middle ahead, 21 to 10, looking to get a little more. And breaks free. That is Malcolm Abia. Abia with a spin, a twist, and a duck. Picked up enough yardage to get the first See, down. See, now he can have all those tools oh, yes. in his toolbox. Yes. A spin, spin, a twist, you know, twist and, a duck. and a duck. And he could have the dip de do He can have the up and over. He's got it all. Watch. He could probably have a two and a half gainer. He's know? got the full He's got the full toolbox right here. Watch. Spin right there. You got the duck. dip, the duck, the bend. And now you've got oh, Tanner. Ball on oh, the ground. balls on the ground. And it looks like the toppers have picked it up. Oh my, oh my, how things change. Torian Smith on the recovery, but all I know is whoever gave that shot, that was unbelievable. I think it was one of the safeties. Somebody stepped up and delivered a blow on Tanner. Tell you what, let's take a break. We're gonna find it. And when we come back, we hopefully we'll look at it again. 8.37 left to play. Turn of events. Hilltoppers with the ball. Coach, some, sometimes you pay a price for a great hit. Watch this. Who have I been talking about all night? Trent Calhoun, look at that. Lays the wood, puts his hat right on the football on his way to somebody else's helmet, pops that ball out, and then, of course, we saw the recovery by, by Torian Smith, but Trent Calhoun... Just, I told you, this guy's a football player. Wolke throws out to Gabler, who, nice <laughs> tackle. What great coverage. <laughs> you want to talk about oh. a great play. That's a great play right there, this time by number 24. That is Derek Crumpton, a freshman. Crumpton, right. Freshman backup safety getting some time again, and he's a good football player. Makes a big play right there. Cody Hughes, the left guard, went hustling off, limping on his ankle. So they've had to replace him. The Hilltoppers have. And it'll be what, second and nine from the 43. Wolke back under pressure. Uh -oh. And now he's put the ball on the ground, and middle is recovered. And Crumpton's got it. So that'll be two turnovers apiece today. Boy, we've had, we've had two turnovers the whole game, and then we've just had two. Within 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Yeah. And that was a big football play right there. 7.52 left to play in the game, and boy, you talk about dodging a bullet. Well, MTSU's defense just did that. Middle. Middle, Middle Tennessee. You see Crompton right there. We talked about him for the play he made just a minute ago. This time, watch him come. Nice play. Who is that? That's 33. Kevin Brown, the other safety, yep, on a blitz. who strips it on his blitz, and then Crompton recovers it. Watch. Brown will come from the left side, Crompton from the right. Here comes Brown right there. Pops it out. Wolke gives it to G inside the 50, the 47. And if you're, uh, if you're Coach Stockstill, you're telling your offensive coordinator who's called an outstanding game, G.A. Mangus, hey, let's pound it out. Let's pound it out. Let's protect that football and pound it out. You see our turnovers are even two to two, but right now it's time for, for them to protect the football at all costs. And I really, Coach Stock's yeah. staff has done a great job as long as long Coach Elson's. So I think it's one interception, one fumble for both sides today. Right. But actually, MTSU's interception was on a field goal. Well, I was going to say, yeah, it was, not, yeah, it was, was honey cuts and not... Uh, Oh, what a stick. <laughs> Marcus G Miner. to the right side, and Miner says, stop right here, young man. Hey, I like this Marcus Miner. I think he's a good football player. I mean, I know he's a good cover guy. 
Minor. Now he's kind of standing out as a, a you know that a guy is not afraid to make a tackle right here. Watch him. Yeah, but gets underneath. But wait a minute. Bam! Now. Drives his feet. I know. Minor, six foot, two hundred, a senior against G five eight one sixty five. Doesn't matter. I know, but just look at the size difference. The tackles, when they a tackle, the tackle. Oh. That's but look at that good foot. Popsicle sled. Yeah. That's what that's from. Yep. He's used to working on the, the popsicle sled, the one-man sled. Go hit it, wrap it up, put your hands around it, pull them back. Let's drive, drive, drive those feet. 6.58 left to play in the ball game. Western takes the timeout as it's third and six for Middle Tennessee. And another big play, another watershed play if you're, if you're Western right here. If you can stop them, at least you get the ball back with a chance. If you're middle, nothing matters, but those, those people holding those sticks across the field, moving them down. You saw there a moment ago the back of uh, 42, Jacob Longoria on the sideline, the sophomore out of El Ferretta. A lot of folks uh, don't know he is a second cousin to the actors. Okay. Still coming. For North Texas. Right, is they, uh, they are still trying week. to become bowl eligible. Yep. North Texas is a, is a big one, obviously. I've seen many a battle between Middle Tennessee and North Texas. And like we said, Western, they, they still have one more. They uh, take a trip down to Florida. Got to go to Miami, yeah. Big Looking to throw by and Klein. knock down again. That is about the fourth pass today that the Hilltoppers have just slapped. One of them went right back into Craddock's hands, as you've been talking about. He gets a pass, a completion, and a reception. And Dan Klein, I told you, I, we hadn't called his name out a ton, but right here we do. Plays off the cut. Six yep. foot six, jumping up like that. Boy, he's going to get his hands on some footballs. David Defada back to kick. Trying to pin him inside the 15 again. I think, I think Weston's going to set up a return, see if they can get a decent return out of it. Boy, the wind brought that one down, and Gabler says, okay. Yep. Drops at the 10, picked up, gave her out to the 21. And that's where the toppers will take over with six minutes, 45 seconds left to go when we return. First and 10 for the toppers. Trailing 21 10 to MTSU. Here goes this empty set again. This is what they started the game off with. And that's David Wolfe, number three, the quarterback. He's trying to look over what's happening, sees that blitz again being shown, and a quick throw out to Gabler. And Gabler out to the 29. Boy, Gabler's had a ton of catches. <laughs> I don't know what he's not. You know, he's kind of the uh, Wes Welker in this offense, you know, for the yeah. Patriots, Wes Welker. He's kind of the same type of guy, you know, goes kind of unassuming. You don't see when the stat sheet comes up, he's got a touchdown, he's got 10 catches. I mean, he's a good one. Just kind of wonder, where'd he come from? Wolke will roll to his left. Throw, pass complete, Jesse Quinn at the 40. I, you know, one thing I'm, I'm impressed with with Wolke, when he gets on the move, this guy here, he delivers a good ball. Gabe with nine catches, 112 yards That's in exactly the touchdown. exactly what you were talking about. Uh, uh, he's one of those guys. I mean, you, you don't really realize it, but lo and behold, he's got, you know, he's got double-digit catches. I like Wolke on the move. I think it makes it very hard to get a beat on him, and he feels the pressure coming here and throws right into it, no problem. Good play by Brown. And that's Gabler Better who breaks one Gabler. and gets a first down. Kevin Brown, the safety, played off the cut block perfect. But again, Gabler once again hits double-digit catches. I'm telling you, this guy reminds me Remind, reminds me a lot of Walker, the way he produces. I don't know how good he is as far as his speed and size and all that stuff. No, but he's catching the ball, he doesn't have hey, to be. All he does is make plays, yeah. and that's a, that's a good guy to have. And Wolke, Wolke's really done a good job under some serious duress. Three sacks, you see it right there. Got away from Tristan Jones and picked here, up the first down. Here 537. The here they come again. Wolke says, I think I'll just run. And he's down inside the 45 to the 43, looks like. 527 to play. Here in beautiful Bowling Green, Kentucky. Home of Western Kentucky University. Do you know how it got its name? They used to bowl on grass. Very close, as a matter of fact. The, uh, the old courthouse 
as they waited for cases to be called, they would lawn bowl out front. You're exactly right. See, that was close. He's good. That was not, just off the off the cuff. Yeah, not bad for a guy from the northeast <laughs> where you don't have grass. <laughs> we got asphalt. That's right. 455 to play. Here comes the pressure from the, from the left side. Good pickup. Second seven, and Wolke just waited on it. And he went, got behind it, sailed it a little bit. Boy, excellent coverage right there. I think that was Kellum. I can't tell for sure who was on the coverage as Wolke tried to hit Quinterrence Cooper. And that'll bring up third and seven. No, actually, it was Riley on the cover. Teddy Riley, the corner, did a nice job playing over the top of that route. You know, and... and Middle is bringing constant pressure. They're always bringing the extra guy. This time it looks like they might drop. Yeah, they're going to drop into a three deep, four under. Oh, yep. Third and seven. Wolke's got time, throws, and that pass Ooh. knocked away. Hickman's a player now. Ivan Hickman, say what you want to say. <laughs> that cat can play. That guy is a football player, the six foot, 213 pound senior. He's got quicks. You know what? Don't be surprised if somebody at, at the next level takes a shot and makes him a safety. I mean, he's got quicks, he drives on the football, he could be an in-the-box safety, a strong safety at the next level. I, I don't know how he'll test out speed-wise, but the guy can play. Not a lot of options with 443 left, trailing by 11. They're gonna go for it on fourth and seven. The toppers send Booker now to the right side. Right. They'll slide left. And here comes backside pressure. Got they just him. didn't have enough people. They were one for one on fourth down conversions. They are now one for two. And Jeremy Kellum said, hey, give me a chance to blitz. Sure enough, the safety comes up, gets on the edge. 5'10", 184 pounds, sophomore from North Lauderdale, Florida. Big sack, adds to the total. And really, the MTS, the Tennessee, Middle Tennessee defense has been outstanding. They really have. They've they've been they've harassed David Wolke all night long. It's been uh, all day long. It's been tough. It's been very tough for for uh, for Wolke to get the ball out there. I was going to say Wolke Wolke has has taken some shots both when he was sacked and, and just being put down on the ground. With uh, 4:38 left to play, 21-10 middle with the ball, the lead, first and ten at their own 49. Balls in the middle of the field. I think this is Tanner again on the pitch. It is. He's across the 50 to the 45. He's got to be. He's got to be closing on on a hundred yard game now. Phillips had a big day. And really, you know, talking to some of the, the Middle Tennessee people, the one thing they kept reiterating to me was the fact that hey, this kid's got a chance to be special. And as the line grows, Fisher and McElroy and and Thompson and Lewis and Williams, as those guys get more mature and more experience, Tanner might have might have these type of days more often. Actually giving him a fullback, that's Longoria, who's playing fullback right now. No, oh, I'm still looking down at the kickers in disgust. I know, you can't stand it. He'll lead for Tanner. Tanner breaks one, but he won't break the rest, and there's right. a flag and at the gonna, 47. And you're going to subtract 10 on top of that because that's a hold. Yeah, it's kind of afraid of that. Surprised it's taking them this long to chat about it. Tanner, you called it. 22 carries, 89 yards of touchdown so yeah. far. Well, that didn't that didn't help us totally. Hold it. Number 17 penalty, on the offense. It won't Penalties count against his total either. Third down. Yeah, they're going to take the play and give him the loss. That's probably a smart move. 17. Honey honey cut right there, number 17. In. Look at he's got a grasp. That's not holding, that's a tackle. That's and that's Beard. Beard's yeah. a good football player, the safety, the strong safety for, for Western, Ryan Beard, the freshman. I told you, they got two freshman safeties. Santoro, Mark Santoro and Ryan Beard, 19 and 15, that are gonna be in that secondary for a long time, making a lot of plays right here at Western. Those two guys can play, add those two. And you got a freshman cornerback in Calhoun. I mean, that's not a bad little group to start with in the secondary. No. What do you mean, a bad little group to start with? Gracious, no. Nope, they'll be together for the next three years after this one, so. 
And, uh, you know, they all know how to make plays. Rick Stock still with a headset on, looking. Yeah. Well, he's right now, he's, he's thinking. Going fun this week. Well, what he's thinking is it's third and, and about four and a half, close to five yards. If we can pick up this first down, we may, may be able to take this game way down. Showing there, 344 to play. You know, here's a good look at MTSU. Should maybe have already been. They, they beat Maryland, and they lost pretty well at Louisville. And Maryland's a great football team. Oh, yeah. They, know, they basically beat Kentucky. Just they just didn't get there. The hardest thing, and we talked about this, Joe, real quick this morning. You know, you started out with Troy, who's a great football yeah. team. Then you had Maryland and Kentucky back-to-back. -back. I mean, golly, you want to talk about three, uh, and there's the first down for Tanner, and that might put him at 100. That definitely will move him forward as the ball starts at 46. He's going to pick up 15 on that play. Boy, that's a big now you, one. You were talking about the schedule middle play yeah, early. You came it out was, of the box. It was murderer's row. Troy, yeah. let me tell you right now, Troy is hands down the best team in the Sun Belt. They are. Larry Blakeney does a great job down there at, at, at Troy. You see right here the run by Tanner. Then you go, then you play, you get, you host Maryland. in Murfreesboro, yeah. Maryland. And Coach out of the Friesen. ACC, yeah. Then, there you go. He's over 100 now, There coach. you go. 2,402. Great day for Philip Tanner. 313 on the clock. And uh, take, some of them, uh, take some of those off. <laughs> minus, He's back minus under 100. Three. He's back under 100. Yeah. And then, like I said, and then, you, then right away you get back on, on the bus. You drive on up to, to Lexington. And you play Kentucky. And beat Kentucky for all practical purposes. Just come up a little bit short. Watch Tanner right here. Boy, is that Klein again? I told you, Klein's a good football player. Right there in the middle of everything. That guy's a good football player. They have two seniors that, you know, this program's going to sorely miss here at Western. One of them's Marcus Miner. Actually, if you count Wolke, too, don't forget him on offense. But defensively, Marcus Miner and, uh, and, and Dan Klein are going to be two guys that this program's going to miss. They, they both are good football players and have contributed so much. Another senior, Ben Souders. The outside linebacker, you know, those are those are guys that are, they, that this program is going to miss sorely. But the truth is, they have helped build the history of Western Kentucky yes. moving forward into the Sun Belt, into into 1A football. And, and uh, you know, kudos to those guys. They get a pat on the back for their for their contributions and and, and have allowed and taken some of the growing pains for this for this university. You're exactly right. Of course, 22 seniors on the western side of the ball, nine seniors on the middle side. That's a scary thing now. Oh. Say what you want to say, but but uh, I think the Sun Belt Conference, the championship, will travel through Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Nine seniors. Only one other team in, in the country with just nine seniors. Yeah, Coach Blakeney down in Troy, you know, he's always going to have a great program, but Coach Stock is, is loaded up pretty good. Back is uh, Tanner again inside the 34. Thought I'd finish that up. And the only other school with only nine seniors? University of Alabama. You're exactly correct. Yeah, and, and you know what? Everybody knows what, what Coach Saban's done down there. 241 on the clock. It has been a good trip to Bowling Green. So impressed with the new facilities here. Yeah, you know, we, we talked about it. I think yeah. it's just part of the growing process. The program's going to get better year after year, and they're going to get better players in here over time. And just, you know, it, it just, it's natural progression. Third and 13. Again, they just keep it on the ground, and there's your man again. Yeah, poor, you know, they're killing his total, Philip Tanner. <laughs> Philip Tanner's total is just getting destroyed. Yep. His yard for carry, but he doesn't care. It's Klein who's killing him. Klein, hey, Klein's doing a good job. Well, can't you be an agent and call it? Oh, no, I guess you can't hear, but you know, can, you got to talk to him, coach. Tell him, hey, come on. Yeah, he's not helping Tanner for next <laughs> to, for, for his totals. But Klein, I'll tell you, he's kind of in a tough situation. You take Klein's, you know, 6'6", 265, uh, playing defensive end in the 3-4, probably not his, you know, not his cup of tea, not going to be his strength. You know, maybe more along the lines of a, of a I don't know, Probably an outside guy, a 
in the okay. four three. Time out. That, really have to bulk that up is their first. 265, that'll be a tough transition. One minute, 31 seconds left to play. And I think middle is taking their first time out facing fourth and 20. Yeah, what they, you know, and this makes sense. I, I, my gut feeling tells me coach will probably at, on a fourth and 20 right here, they maybe try to quick kick it away, which means the, the kickers have to go away from their space heaters. And Man, you kicker have been on the kickers today. It makes me sad. I'm, I'm mad about that. You know what? I'm really upset. Wow. Yeah, they're softies, right. Yeah, we said Western one more game on the schedule. They travel to Florida International. I, I'm sure the weather will be very similar. Oh, yeah, don't you know, <laughs> Miami. <laughs> Yesterday, you could not have asked for more. Today, you don't want to ask for more. Middle band having a good time while they're here. I think they're trying to get revved up, maybe to try to block this thing. Well, it's only 11 points with a minute 31 left to go. I mean, stranger things have happened, ladies and gentlemen, than to lose an 11-point lead in a minute and a half. Yeah, that would be tough duty, though, right now. That would be really tough duty. I, I, I just don't know if they could do that. They're trying. Defada hits a line drive, taking it to nine. And quickly out of, out of town, out they of gave, bounds is, is Gabler. <laughs> they gave it a shot right there. I think, was it number 47? It was. It was number yeah. 47. Trent Calhoun back on the field, gave it a shot. Had to be helped off the last time after hit, make, making the stick that caused the fumble. But Boy, he's back again on special team. Yeah, you got to give Calhoun some credit as he gave it a run. Hey, there's how to get out of town, jump on the train. Sure. Runs just uh, to, I guess what, uh, I guess we consider that the north end of the field. Haven't been yeah. able to see the sun today, so I'm not, yeah, I'm not completely sure. First and 10 from their own 19. It's good to see some clean jerseys out there. Well, they're all going to be clean because they're playing on turf, but. New numbers. New numbers, there you New go. New numbers. Same, yeah. same, same defense, though, same oh, pressure. Yeah. And Grable caught out of bounds. He I'll might get a yard out of that one. I'm going to tell you again, and who threw him out? The guy that's been dishing out beatings all day, Ivan Hickman. Boy, Hickman, he's had himself a whale of a game. He's got, you know, now he's just saying, hey, don't throw the ball near me because that ain't going to fly today. I say, he has pretty much him and protected his own turf today. Yeah, him and Carmichael, and, and really the, the defensive line has been just – Smothering. I mean, it's probably the best word for what I for, for what I think has gone on. I mean, they've just smothered them. Cooper on the catch at the 25. And he don't. Yeah, don't think they got out. Here's one that'll be interesting. Remember this one? Last play, turn. Oops. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's the box. How stick. do you how do you hold the stick? You know. They put it back together. Yeah, they had to put it back up there. Same little run out. Yeah, that's going to move the chains. And right now, if you're uh, if if you're Middle Tennessee, you're just saying, hey, let's keep everything in front of us. You protect the sideline so they can't get out of bounds, and we might be able to to finish this game off. But Wolk, give give that Warrior some credit, man. He's just uh -oh. he's still going at it. Oh you know? yeah. 47 seconds left to play, 21-10. Quinn Terrence Cooper on the last couple grabs in 112 Graves, who had a big catch earlier. Wolke looks, rolls right, throws. It falls incomplete at the, 40, at the 38. That was Jesse Quinn. Oh, well, that's it. That was fourth. That's all yep. she wrote. Fourth down. And that's it, a couple knees, and uh, it's time to go home. So you call this what we expect to see now, you call your very favorite play. My, it's the greatest play in football, victory. Take a knee, and head home. You know, and, and you know what? Really, when you look at this football game, this was a classic old school backyard football game. Both teams kind of hunkered down, mixed in some of the running game. Um, 
You know, I was impressed. I I'm very impressed with this Middle Tennessee squad. It gives them back-to-back -back victories. Uh, last week against uh, Louisiana Monroe, 24-21, and this week uh, up here in, uh, in Bowling Green, 21-10. Players already beginning to shake hands. That'll be the last play of this contest. Middle has repaid the favor laid upon them by the Hilltoppers last year at home and has come out to Bowling Green and beaten Western Kentucky 21 to 10. So, tell you what, let's get a break and we're going to come back, wrap all of it up here from the Houchin Industries LT Smith Stadium on the campus of Western Kentucky University. MTSU again the winner. 